Throw, yeah, throw a few filters on there, good <laughs> man. I'll throw you. I'll throw you twenty in the pocket we'll, later. We'll let you pick the photo. We'll, we'll let you pick the photo. There'll be twenty in the back pocket. <laughs> um, Molly, thanks a million for coming up. Thank you so much, Molly for Kelly. Me. Molly Kelly. Molly, where are you from? I am from a lovely little village called West or Dunbeg in West Clare. Where are you are now, or always were there? Um, well, I live a little bit away from it at the moment, only a couple of miles away from it, but yes, born and reared there. Uh, um, country girl. Country girl, farmer's daughter. And uh, how many in the family? Five of us. I'm the baby. I'm, I'm the accident. <laughs> how many boys? How many girls? I have two older brothers, two older sisters. So you the baby, two older brothers, two yes. older sisters. Yes. Who got the farm? That's the question. Um, was. The farm The farm was kind of a mix between my brothers. But when my dad passed away, my dad passed away when I was 14. So Sorry to hear that. Yeah, so um, it, kind of, it kind of shifted between the brothers and then eventually was kind of rented out. Because... I think the love of it went when dad went because it was really, you know, his, his baby, his baby, you know. And the lads and must have been days, young. It was kind of the boys have to take over the farm. You know, the girls aren't allowed like. And did you want that? Oh, yes. Do you love farming? Yes. I love it. Uh, did you have a happy little childhood growing up? Um, I had a tricky childhood growing up. Um, I had the farm was my playground. I was very blessed to be able to do a lot of things probably girls my age wouldn't do. Um, my dad was very sick from when I turned two and I saw a lot of sickness, but for me it was normal because it's all I knew with him. Mm. I always say it was harder for my brothers and sisters because they're a lot older than me. They knew him well, uh, a workaholic, old school workaholic man um, who had a quarry, had the farm, had a butcher shop at one stage. So real hard worker. but. What did he suffer from? He had a very rare disease, actually. Five in the world like, had his extent of it. He had seriatic arthritis, but a lot of people would have that on its own. But he had seriatic arthritis with it. So, oh sorry, he had angulosing spondylitis with it. What was that? It's a very rare form of arthritis. Each of them are rare, but he had both of them together. And then on top of that, he developed psoriasis. So he had the worst form of that. Mobility so, and pain, was it? Or oh, yes. Of- um, just, you know, ate the bones, like ate his bones and his skin. And eventually the tablets and drugs that kept him alive were the ones that killed him in the end because his kidneys, he got organ mm-hmm. failure. So it was a great childhood. Like I say, you know, I had like a car for going back around the fields when I was like seven yeah. <laughs> and horses and I drove tractors and you know, I fed the cattle when I was very, very small, off in the zitter back the road before school, you know. But I would have been pulled out of school a lot. You know, your dad's not well. He's not going to make the night. He always did, like, he always yeah. did and came home fighting there. But yeah, it was, it was tricky. Tricky now when I think back of it, definitely, yeah. Definitely. And that was your normal? My normal, 100%. And did, um, did you enjoy school? Did it affect you in school? Or? I, I wasn't a lover of school. I wanted to be out. I wanted to be out doing something. I wanted to be driving something. I wanted to be in a tractor. Oh my God, I counted the days to get my tractor license. That's all I wanted. Would you been considered a tomboy back then? Yes, I was. I don't know if that was a good or a bad thing, but I was. I was the only girl in my class in national school. There was no other girl. So I was the only girl. There was seven boys and a girl, which was me. So I was the only girl. <laughs> and in secondary school, what was that like? Yeah, I found it hard to transition because longer days again and I just wanted to be out working. I wanted to be in the tractors. My brother had started his own contracting business. He would have been working with a civil engineering company and um, I just wanted to go working for him. That's all I wanted. And did you not hang with all the girls? No, not really, no. I've always got on better with boys because women are amazing. I am one. But... I seem to get on better with boys. I don't like drama sometimes on all women, but sometimes a lot of bitchiness and drama and gossip and I'm kind of more, you know. It's because you were busier. Busy. Kilt with the busy. Were you kilt with the busy? Kilt with the busy. Kilt with the busy. So when you left school, what was your first job? I worked with my brother. Driving? Driving tractors. Uh, jump trailers. Go on, talk to me about tractors. I want to hear about the tractors. <laughs> Tell me the well, tractor. We had a Ford AT10 at the time and she was my baby. And I used to have like a radio in the back of it because there wasn't a radio in her. But I used to like have a big radio that you put batteries into. <laughs> and that would be in like, the back of her. Like one of those. <laughs> like they say, run the MC in. But like when I was like 
I'll probably get in trouble for this, the girl you're listening, but like when I was 12 and 13, like I would be going down to the, the village would probably be two miles away from the farm. And I'd be flying down the Zitter, like to the shops, like in the tractor, living my best life. Like, hadn't the Zitter's a lovely inside for oh. such a shy tractor? <laughs> yeah. Like, I remember we had loads of tractors. There was Belarus's, there was Dyatt's, yeah. there was everything. And then the Zetter, which everyone laughed at, had these padded wings. Loved the Do you remember them? They did. Matt, you don't know. <laughs> oh, when you're down the bog and you put the double wheels on to get you out, like, oh, just living your best life. Like, yeah. you know, at the time it was very normal. Nowadays, the way times have changed, that seems like nearly a novelty because everything has just changed so much. You don't see the kids sitting up on the turf coming home in the trailers mm -hmm. anymore. Do you know, you don't see the young lads kind of, I don't know, it's just changed so much now, I think. Do you know what I think of every time I hear of bringing home the turf and sitting on a trailer? I was coming home, we we're sitting on the trailer yeah. and of course David's been really cool just grabbing the ditches and doing this and I grabbed fucking a big briar and it ripped the hand off. <laughs> Never did it again. Yeah, I'd say you didn't. I learned my lesson. Good, good lesson in that. So did you do a lot of bog work? Yeah, my dad owned um, a big bog so he would have cut an awful lot of turf and a lot of the locals would have bought it from him so we spent a lot of time in the bog. My mother would give out mad about the times in the bog but I actually love the bog because I always got to drive the tractor so I didn't care. Do you care. love it now? Well now That's we, a fucking truth my don't lie to me. I do still love it because I'll tell you why we don't obviously do the turf anymore but my brother built a track um, a kind of a rally track down there now. Did he? Yeah, it took a long time, tarred track, so they do clear motor club, take it over for days. He obviously does days there himself and we have drift cars come down or rally cars and buggies. So they've days there and yeah, it's it's good. It's nice to still be down there because it was one of my dad's favourite places. He just loved the bog. So it went from cutting turf to yeah. drifting? Yeah. So That's we, deadly. Yeah, it's a cool so, it's cool. How long did you stay working with your brother? Did you transition into bigger gear or what happened? Yeah, well, he... He always was very successful, um, very hard worker like my, my father, a pure work colleague. But my two brothers, they worked together. But the main man, the boss, he got a big contract for Dumbay Golf Course before it was anything, just mm. just fields. <laughs> Can I just tell David that that is the golf course that... You fancy? Yeah, the one that I was down on. My, my uncle owns a house beside the golf course. Wow. Yeah. Well, who, I probably know your uncle. <laughs> you only there about two years ago, right, oh. girl? Oh yeah, I actually. <laughs> it's going Fuck down, off. It's going down <laughs> tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh! Yeah. Do you know him? I do know him. Yeah, I do. I, I do. Carl, I know him. Yeah. Not, Not fucking personally, mad. but I I know I know the name. Yeah, definitely. That's <laughs> up by the golf course road. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you're not that far from the hotel, are you? Know? No, we wouldn't. The hotel is only only a couple of miles away. So when we went down holidays there, yeah, me and the kids. And we've seen all those tracks. You know, when you see that video, your man goes, how would you get a machine to do that on every crossroads? Is that you? Are you doing that? No. You into the cars now? I am. I like cars. Were you a girl racer? I was a navigator for my brother with an Evo 9. You may give this brother a shout out. <laughs> Martin Kelly. Martin Kelly. Probably going to kill Respect, me. you fucked up your sister. <laughs> yeah, he did, he did, he did. You drove her mad. He did. Do you know what? Um, when I was younger, I used to think I was so different. But now when I think back, I'm actually so grateful for my childhood because it was so much more simpler than nowadays with the phones and technology. And, you know, obviously we're on, we have our platforms, but I wouldn't trade what I had for anything because I had, like I said, the farm was my playground. You know what I mean? I had a, a car, like a little Renault car outside the door when I was seven because we had tracks all the way back to the field. You know, I pick up my next door neighbor, like he'd walk up the field and jump into the car and we'd drive over and back like for two hours. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. At like... Probably seven, eight years of age. Like, who do, who can say they did that? No, like, it's great. it was great crack. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, you, but if you've seen someone doing it now, you'd be mortified. You'd be ringing the guards. <laughs> like, you bringing the guards. Yeah. <laughs> and how long did, did you stay with your brother for? Yeah, for years and years. Yeah, working for him. Yeah. Because he, when Jumbe Golf Course was finished, he was doing more golf courses and was always busy. He's always been flat out. Um, Thank God, touch wood. But yeah, it was great times. The and golf course was a great time. Great learning experience. Do we, you travel a lot for work? Uh, we didn't at the time no everything was local enough so it was good he's always been local enough but now they venture out I obviously don't work with him now but now they venture out they do a lot of different things windmills and you know he has the quarry he has my dad's quarry so he'd be flat out with gravel and crushing and all that kind of crack so. and you give it up you left him yeah, right, my bones got bad <laughs> you, you, you threw in the towel you left him in the lurch <laughs> there's no fear of him there's plenty more there did there's he mind you leaving no I went there was always like did you get on like yeah. I work with my brother fight like tigers at all time yeah, we did get on when I was younger. Yeah. I was a bit wild. Like I was, I was. Did a you do what you were Not really. No, probably not. Because my sister wouldn't listen to a fucking word I'd say. 
no. You see, there's a big age gap, like, so I suppose... I do, I do, but I was taught work-wise, but I, that don't, I, was, now. I was a bit bold. Like. Did you do what you wanted? After work, probably, yeah. If there was a crossroad, clear. So what did you do? Uh, what was your hobbies? Cars. Oh, my God. What was your first car? My first... <laughs> you know, it'll just tell you how different times were. When I turned 17, there was a, the tax office in Innes, which was the big town in Clare, mm. which is an hour away from us. And on the Friday, I turned 17 on a Saturday, right? I, my mother brought me to the tax office. She, your know, good old pal worked. Couldn't get off trouble. Um, and I got my license on the Friday. And your one said to my mother, "Do you want her driving out twelve o'clock tonight?" <laughs> right. okay. And I was insured in my car. I had the car outside the door for six months because I'd been working with my brother. Yeah. I had a Peugeot one hundred and six. Well, if you saw her, lads. Was she two she door was, or three door? She was three door. Was she three door? She, no, she was sorry, two door, two door. She was. I had. Oh my God. I used to, my brother used to bring over in the trailer. We got the windows tinted. I got spotlights put into her. I had the green stripe going along her. Oh, the dreams, green stripe. I mean, this joke, stripe. go fast stripes like. Did you change the head unit? She was, she was just. Did you get a cool head unit that had the, just the LCD things changing? I had 16 inch wheels in her and they were bigger than the car like. It wasn't it mad. It, what year was that? <laughs> she was zero, I don't know, she was like zero six or something. Zero six. I remember when I got my first Puget, all right? I bought new. It was a 306. And I remember going down to get allies on it. And I got 15, right? <laughs> and I remember all the lads going, you're mad. Living the dream. <laughs> you're mad. And I went a bit off, off the course. I didn't get Venoms. Everyone was getting Venoms. Yeah. And I decided to get these multi-spoke ones. And they were only 15s. And I remember they dragging. <laughs> and the lads are, they're too big, David. They're too big. Now, if you didn't have fucking 18s or 19s, you're nobody. <laughs> I tell you, the 19s are no fun when you're driving in the born rain, like. Don't tell me you got 19s on it. There's 19s on the Audi and the aqua planning coming up the road like would just... Whoosh, whoosh, ah, just that's no bother to you if you were used to it. I are not a bother, sir. Do you hate driving um, front wheel drives when you get used to it? I am a... No, I... Look, I suppose back in the day I would have had the best of best cars. Now I'm not as bothered anymore because, you know, your kids and family and everything, you're not as bothered as of putting massive money into them anymore but it's get from to you. But back in the day, like I just was... Cars were life like. So, how long did you keep the 106? Oh, <laughs> it was actually funny. I had her for six months before I turned 17. I got her that night. She's no power steering, right? I took off at 12 o'clock that night, went to Kiki, the nearest town where some of my friends were. I drove till half four in the morning. I couldn't feel my shoulders the next day because the no <laughs> <laughs> your, your arms are so sore. From no power so sore. I had her for two weeks. I traded her in and bought a brand new Peugeot 206. <laughs> Brand new one. Brand new one. I was working sure. I was flat out with kid with the busy. And you know, the boom was on. We were building the golf course. Sure. Yeah. We were, you know, Money's never going to end. Money wasn't the problem. Do you wreck it? Um, I made dust of her a few times. <laughs> 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 I did, yeah. yeah. Hold on. Yeah. I, I wasn't easy uh, on the piddle. I, I'll, I'll give you money for that because that's a fucking t-shirt. Yeah, yeah. No, I did. Made <laughs> dust of it. <laughs> oh, like, like, as embarrassing as this sounds, like... That's I, the name I, of the podcast. I backed her up on two bacon trays one night and tried to put her around the circles one night. Does that work? It, it, well, it does work, yeah, but it's not great for the car. Like, and, and when I think back now, oh my God, like, but I did just like... Just a uh, bacon tray to make it slide around. I was obsessed with having these rear wheels, so I said, we'll start slow, sure. we'll throw her up on two bacon trays and see how she goes around. <laughs> Would you not be afraid that one of them would go up in the wheel she arch? She went around. Not for long, like, but she went around. That's fucking mad. What was your favourite car? That I ever had. Yeah. It's the 180. Why did you get, you sold it and you oh, bet you hate yourself I had now. It, Oh, I hate myself. I hate myself. But The money all them yokes are making now. She was just an animal, but... Not a safe car for me because now, obviously, there's limits and boundaries. But when I was younger, there was no fear. I had no fear. Like, Did you have a sticker that said no fear? I had a large sticker on the back window that said <laughs> no fear and WCC. What does that mean? I won't say. No, tell me. We were the West Clare group. <laughs> or West, sorry, WC, West Clare. No, oh God, I'm after mixing it up. It was W. West Clare. Had you a little group like? It was cars group or something. Name. Yeah, it was like a West Clare cars and we had these big stickers and the guards would pull us like and fine us. For having stickers? For having stickers. Like. Yeah. Yeah. Were they blocking the whole window? Like. They were well, big no, no, hold on now. Yeah. Were you pricking around and making West nice Coast and messy? Cars. Oh yeah, we were bold. Like. No, we weren't, we weren't disrespectful. Like we were, we just loved cars. Like if we were told, you know, stop, we'd stop. Like. Did you drive by egg? Did I what? Was the drive-by egging going on? No. 
Don't lie to me. <laughs> <laughs> no, there wasn't. Don't, not Molly. There was, Molly, okay, you look me in the eyes. You once, tell me you I, never egged. You know what? When I was 16 once in the Zetter, we did a Halloween night in Dunbeg, all right. But you I tried to egg in a Zetter? Yeah, we were flying. You could literally <laughs> run after the person that just egged you. You know what? We just made our own fun, but no, not in the car. I never did the eggs in the car, no. <sighs> did you go out in Ennis? Was Ennis here? Do you know, I never went out much when I was younger because I just wanted to drive. So we, me and like, we would be the people driving up the main street of Ennis looking for the drunk ones to pay us to give them lifts home. <laughs> and they did. Like I often, not that, and I didn't need it, but I, I actually made some serious money of a Saturday night in Ennis, bringing people home. Did you ever throw washing up liquid in the fountain? No. Tell the truth, Molly. I think you're lying to I, me. I didn't. I've seen it. I didn't do it though. I, I wasn't, you see, that's more kind of like mess or crack, like, you know, vandalism kind of stuff. I wasn't really into that. Well, like. no, bubbles aren't vandalism. Aaron, no, I wasn't like, I wouldn't have got my kicks out of a few I bubbles used to, in the fountain. Like. I used to work down in Ennis. Oh, I see. He's just looking for someone to blame. No, for. and every morning when we come on a Monday morning, there'd be fucking bubbles everywhere. Ah, yeah, uh, it was just mandatory. But no, I, I wouldn't have really got my kicks out of that. Like, no. You were too busy making bank. Too busy making bank and doing, making wrecking roads. But that's very uh, entrepreneurial of you. I don't know. I just, I, it wasn't even about the money. I love the work. I love working hard. Like, I love being busy. I'm a busy person. I'm no good to be doing nothing. When you left your brother, where'd you go? I've been working for my sister owns a property maintenance and management company. So I was traveling Ireland doing property maintenance with what's, her. What's that mean? So she runs company, runs apartments, houses all over Ireland and she does all the maintenance so she has her own whole range of people like what's her name? 30 vans on the road. They're LL Solutions. Shout out to them. LL Solutions. Um, yeah, so doing, she has her own carpenters, plumbers, tilers. Yeah. Everything. So just look after rental properties everywhere. Yeah, every single county in Ireland. Everywhere. She has, like, she's, it's unbelievably, it's crazy. Have you ever sat where and go, listen, what's her name? Diane. Diane, rein it in. Just rein it in a little. She is a complete boss lady. This lady, oh my God, like, boss lady. Like, men, she'd scare them, like. She just, won't scare, scare me? Oh, she'd scare you. She won't scare me. She quite knew it. If I have a Protestant wife, and I'm not afraid of her, so if I'm not afraid of yeah, her, Yeah, but you must be afraid of her, because you keep put, saying Protestant. Why did you have to say, like, you could just say it's Vicky? No, because it's Protestant Vicky. <laughs> <laughs> I say Vicky fix you pretty good. <laughs> I'm terrified of Vicky. My job in life is to keep Vicky happy. Do you know what? That should be every man's job. Seemingly, that is what every yeah, man's job see, is. Yeah, but you see, she, I, I really admire Vicky because, like, I just think she's amazing. You know, she does everything. Mm. She just does everything. You know, you can see that she's such an attentive mother. She puts so much time into them. She cooks, she bakes, she... He's obviously very good at keeping your relationship good. Do you know, I think there's always a balance, like, because some people kind of lose track. I think that's the key, it's a balance. Yeah, that's why so many marriages, I feel, are failing, because people get safe. They'd be like, oh, we've built a house now, you're working, whatever's going on, but we're not going to put the time in anymore. You know, the spark goes then. The friendship goes. You have to... You I have do, to I do a lot of thinking about that, though. I think it's very hard for, say, me and Vicky, I don't know we're happy now, right? Yeah. But you never know what's going to go on in the future. Of course. But when you look at a lot of uh, people from the outside looking in, you see the divorce rates and you see the way everyone thinks and the way everyone acts. It's like, yeah. people want everything. They want all this stuff and they want yeah. all these things. And then you insert kids and then you have all these lads because I get so many messages from, from men and people that I know and like, you're working, you're working, you're working to facilitate a lifestyle. And then all of a sudden, when the things are acquired, that's when women want more time and they want more, you know, like, where's the spark? Where's this? And the poor cunts flow trying to facilitate a lifestyle. You can't 100%. do both. hundred percent. And I think, and I'm not, I'm not speaking for everyone. Everyone is different and everyone lives different. But like, I think sometimes attention isn't put into each other either. You know, like. I think it's good to come in and even, you know, give your husband a slap across the arse like and say, how are you? Had you a good day? Do you know, mm. Keep the funniness there. You know, yeah. obviously there'd be like disagreements and arguments and stuff, but you should keep, you could keep the spark. Yeah. Keep the, you know, that little, little bit of romance, little bit of kind of like, you come in, you give someone a nice kiss, you give them the slap across the arse. You know, you do like the little things. Because mm. I, I think that's what keeps, yeah. keeps the good. They come and go though. It's like when you have kids, you know, when you have kids first and you're, yeah, like the first six months, that is it. You are, yeah. you, you're a slave to kids. 
I do think a lot of people that have kids, if they try to have the same lifestyle they had before kids, they're doomed. Because you once you have kids, you enter into... You will uh, never have the same lifestyle. No. You're, you're, but a lot you're, of people try to. No, you couldn't because your mind is completely, it's always about the kids then. You're, you're always worrying, you're always planning, you're always thinking. You mm. can never go back to that carefree way. No, no. Even though back in them days you probably were worrying about something else at the time. Yeah. But when kids come into the equation it's totally different. No, you enter a life of servitude and it gives you a lot more back than it takes. So of you mean course. I can't play golf for five hours on the weekend? No, no. It's no. going to be a tough one. Give them That'd clothes be a tough away. One. <laughs> <laughs> They're gone. <laughs> They're gone. So how long were you working with your sister? Are you still working with her? Well, I was, but I took some time off because with the job, you, we work up country. And I live back in West Clare. So like you're an hour before you can get to mm. a motorway like or anything. So I was gone all the time. Like I was gone half four in the morning, maybe not back to 10 o'clock at night. Maybe later, maybe a little bit earlier. And it was just crazy. So I said, you know what, this summer I'm taking some time off. So I've taken the last few months off. And it's been lovely because I'm... Oh, home. now? Yeah. So I'm off at the moment. I'm loving it. I'm swimming every day because I love to keep fit. I love, I'm very a good advocate of keeping your mental health good, looking after it. So it's been nice. It's been a lovely time. Well, we've gone, back, we've gone a bit too far, right? We, we, far. We'll bring it right back a bit. We'll bring it right back a bit. So you started working with your sister. Yeah. Working like a fucking cunt, going yeah. all the time. Yeah. What was the, what were you driving to work for? Vans. Vans. Yeah. No, but what sure. were you working for? What's the goal? Do you know what? Do you know, like when, when, when say for a, a guy, because I, 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 I'm dying to talk to women about stuff like this, because I know what my driving force has always been. Yeah. You know, like for a guy, like first you want a car and you want a nice car and yeah. then you want to get a woman and then you, 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 you have these things you that know, you work towards. I think my priorities, when you say it like that, have changed so much as the year. When I was younger, that was always the goals. Like I, I want this, I want that, I'm going to get this. What was get the that. this and that? Mostly cars and things like that. It was like, I want this, I want, you know, I want to have, I, want, I went from the Peugeot, then I want a newer Peugeot, then I want a 180, then I want a Jeep, now I want this, now, you know, then I want a new Audi, then I want a new Jeep, like it goes, comes and goes. But then I think, and I went to Australia for a while as well and stuff and worked out there and did that. How long it, did you stay out there? I was there for a year. Just a year? Yeah. When, what year did you go? <sighs> I don't know. Well, like, is it? Must be, I suppose, 12 years ago. All right, okay. 12, 13 years ago. Loved it. Great place. Great place. And did you get married? I came back and <laughs> I met my kid's dad on Stephen's night. I only came back to renew my, <laughs> renew my visa. <laughs> <laughs> so you came home from Australia? I did, David. I did. I did. I flew home by myself. <laughs> so Stephen's night, went out? Went out. Met a good looking chap. And? Had a couple of childers. And? Will I get in trouble now for that as well? <laughs> no, 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 no. So you had a couple of children, three? Had a couple of kids, yeah. And that was that. What, what is the age of the kids? Rhea is nearly, is five next month. Dylan is nine and Madison Maggie is ten. Great name. Great name. Madison. Madison Leila. That's cool. Yeah, Maddie. Um, do you call him Maddie? I call her Maddie, yeah, I do. Maddie Leila, yeah. That's why I try to pick names that don't get abbreviated that much. You, you pick, I, lo, I, don't, I actually love your boys' names. I love this because I love superheroes. Yeah, I know. I'm love obsessed it. with superheroes. Like, I'm a bit obsessed with Bruce Wayne as well. So I just think it's lovely to have it because they're not names that are used that often. So they're actually unique. And do you know that happened by accident? Vicky said to me when Clark was been, you know, he was in her belly. All right. I thought he was going to say something the, else. And the bump was getting big. <laughs> and she was there. You get to pick the name of the boy because that's what we always, we always yeah. talked about that. And I said, joking one night, I was there. Oh, I was watching Superman, I was there. I think I'd call him Clark. She goes, you will not. And I went, who will I not? <laughs> was there wine involved? Were you drinking wine? No, I was, probably, I was probably drinking um, Bulmers at the time. It was in my Bulmer stage. Oh God, we all went to that stage. Yeah. Do you know I went up to Loud, right? And we went into a pub in Loud. And I went into the pub and I said, can I have a large bottle? Because where I'm from, if you ask for a large bottle, or down in Clamell or anywhere like that, it means... Yeah, large bottle of Bulmers. Yeah. yeah. And your man goes... Pine bottles, aren't they? Yeah. Pine your man goes, large bottle of what? Stout. And I said, Bulmers. I have a large Guinness here too. <gasps> yeah. yeah, he was very nasty to me. But you see, if you're Irish, you're programmed to supposedly love Guinness. That's it. Love Guinness? Yeah. I don't want personally, no. Like, 
Do you I, drink in it? No, I, I have a favourite drink. No, I'm going to upset people because I know you're friends with certain people. Jeez, I don't know where this is going. <laughs> <laughs> the, the mayo buds. getting shot down. The mayo buds. Oh, is this uh, gin? There's a small, no, there's a small bit of a thing going on with TikTok. You know what? I'm going to give it to him now one day is over this, but. What? Rockshore. I'm, I'm an advocate for Rockshore. Oh, you see Stephen Cowboy Kelly. Rockshore. So you, what you're saying, there's a beef now between you and well, Stephen Cowboy Kelly. Well, I can tell Cowboy you one thing. Kelly. If Mayo won the slam, I bet you they'd drink Rockshore out of it, would they? Is Rockshore not made by the same company that all the others are made? Guinness is makes this, Rockshore. Is this Guinness me? Creamy Pines yeah. makes Rockshore. And what's wrong? What's the difference between Rockshore? He, he's just racist against Rockshore. <laughs> he is, is this he because is, he keeps referring it to like basically... You're you're a pussy if you drink rock shore. He has that. Do you know what? In them words, he has called people that. Well, you know, it, it's wrong. Like it's yeah, wrong. he could be joking. Oh no! Oh no! I've had a few words with him now on TikTok over it. He's very serious about it. Like is he? It's been oh, discontinued yeah. now, yeah. though, isn't it? What I, is? Rockshore. I'd love to get him now on a live podcast about the rock shore. I tell you, <laughs> I could ring him now if you want. I, I would. I'd start him. <laughs> I'd start him very quick with his creamy pint. Do you think his beard is majestic? <laughs> no. Do you like the beard? I don't like it when there's creamy pints all over it. Don Curtin loves creamy pints. Don Curtin's a legend. He is a legend. Don, well, he does love creamy he's pints. He's a good friend of mine, a very supportive guy. And do you know what? That man calls it as he sees. No bullshit, no ears and graces. What I like about Just Don is... Just a good is, um, guy. Don is what he is. Mm. Like when Don says he's about the good times, Don <laughs> is about the good times. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, he's fierce funny. He is... Um, I just there's no there's nothing hidden with him. Mm. What you see is what you get. And he like I could send him something now, it could be something from pornohub.com and I'd say, throw that up there, will you, just to support the cause. And he wouldn't he'd say, Yeah, Molly, Whoa, no bother. Why are you supporting him? No, what's the cause? He wouldn't even ask. <laughs> he'd say, Molly, not a bother girl. And he'd throw it up. <laughs> no bother in the world, like. <laughs> and, come here, yeah. So you stay at home now to be a kind of a full time mother, yeah? At the moment, yeah. Look, I you know, but I'm always like I'm always busy. I'm always. Well, always I do it when you're you're wearing luminous jackets and you're driving around. You're doing stuff. Oh yeah, hundred percent. I like I don't have enough hours in the day, but I love being present with the kids because they're only young once. You work for cash money, are you? You're, you're <laughs> <laughs> cash is doing a bit of cash money cash deals. Is king, <laughs> you know I'm a jack of all trades. You'd be like I have neighbors calling me up there, you know, to like on the airlock, the oil burners and all. You've no, you've no idea. Like. Would you be good now with the tools? I'd be good with the. T- <laughs> I would be good. I'd be fair handy with the tools. Like. <laughs> and not one person that's listening to me thinks I said that in the way. I did. Um, so what? What do you? What do you do now? Like, what's your thing? So you started. How did you start doing social media? So I started Snapchat, and basically, I why was, Snapchat? Because I like Snapchat. I think Snapchat is easier, and there's not as much hate or trolls, and you kind of don't have to take as much notice of the messages. Do that kind of way. Like as in the bad ones. No, I'm lucky I don't get too many of them in fairness, but I just felt that when you go on social media, you know, a lot of people go on it in the morning and whatever, I felt like there was such negativity. Like you could literally see something negative and you could be thinking about it for the day. Some people let it into their heads and I just thought, so much negativity. What were so, you watching the negativity on? Just different things. Just on different Snapchat. people. Yeah, Snapchat or TikTok or anything in general. Not all of it now, but you just, there is a lot of it. A lot of people giving out. Given out for things they shouldn't really be given out about. So I just felt, you know what? I want to show a little bit of positivity. I want to show that you can work on your mental health. You can work all day. Like I would come home from maybe like mental hour days working, but I would go out and do a 5K. It could be nine o'clock at night. And what I'm made you to... work on your mental health? Did you suffer with your mental health? I, I had a, a couple of years ago. Yeah, I, I definitely went through a bit of anxiety and I went to my doctor about it. It was just... How did it manifest itself with you? It just, I think it was probably because working a lot and going a lot it just kind of came out of nowhere to be honest with you it was literally out of nowhere and you get that feeling like oh my god like I'm about to croak it like but went to my doctor and the doctor said tablets you know I will I put you on something I was like no like I'm not going to take in tablets I don't want to take tablets give me a few weeks let me try something else see how it goes went to the gym was crippled at first <laughs> Jesus I'm never going in there again went back were you overweight when you went to the gym no 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 I wasn't but I went and got, and you know what? I started getting this kind of like powerful feeling, you know, as I got better and as I knew how to do stuff more in the gym and how as I got fitter and stronger, I was like, yeah, I like this, like, this is good. Feel strong, feel good. And it just made me, like, being fit and healthy is never going to take away your problems. It's not going to stop problems happening, but I feel that it will help you deal with problems better. Mm. Like, you get through things better. 
you bounce back faster. Like when you have poor mental health and you're not looking after your body or yourself, you know, I feel that you, you, you can dwell on things longer. Things can get a hold of you. And sometimes it's really hard to shake it. And I, but I think when you're mentally stronger, you can get through things much and come out of them faster. Do you think it's harder for, I, I think I'm not a woman. Uh, I think it must be harder for women with kids to do stuff like that when they have and like who, how, how do you mind the kids? How do you get everything done? It's but a time thing. It is a time thing and it is hard, but you know what? There's so many ways of doing things. Like I used to work out at home and everything. Like sometimes if I knew I was going to have a really late Five year old one hand. <laughs> but you, you do, if you really want to work at something, like I have a great friend there that said to me before, like when your motivation is low, it's dedication that kicks in. So you want to change your life and you want to do something, you have to be dedicated. You have to put the time in. So if that just means you don't even have workout gear and you have two cans of beans and you're doing whatever, you do something. You just do something. Like it just like, look, I swim in the ocean every day. People, I get snaps saying, how would you win there? How would you Every do day. It? Every day. Like, I love it. It makes me feel... Did you ever get bit by a shark? No. I love sharks, but Did I haven't... Did you ever see bit... one? No. Did you ever get bit by a jellyfish? No. Stung? No. Every day, and every day you're in it? Like, I don't be running into the jellyfish, like, and the water's so cold now, you wouldn't see a jellyfish for love and money, like. During the summer, like? Well, I've never got bitten by one, like, they're not really awful ones in Ireland, like. They don't really be out to get you, like. Hi. Right. I'm kind of afraid of the water, you see. I'm a leash man. We don't have an awful lot of sea around us. True. True story. I'm afraid of the sea. Are you? Yeah, I am, kind of. Really? Yeah. I love the sea. But my farmhouse was right in front of it, like, so. I so, if there's snow on the ground. Oh, I've gone in when there's frost in, like, the height of December, like. Like, for fuck's sake. Fuck me. But it's not hard. The water. Shabbat! Itself, it's, not <laughs> it's not hard. It's not hard. It's not hard. There's a, there's a great feeling after it, like, you feel amazing, sets you up. You're obviously going like wetsuit and all. To I've never wore a wetsuit. Have, have you, you watched my steps? No, I have. I have. I wear, I wear far less than a wetsuit. I thought, I thought Actually, that you Actually, what were... I wear, would you believe, cheers up an awful lot of people in the day. <laughs> but I thought that you were, you were just doing that lately. You do that all no, the time. No, no. When I was working, I wouldn't obviously be in every day. So I would probably do it maybe once or twice a week, which would be on the weekends. Um, so you must be a really this. good swimmer. I am a good swimmer, yeah. yeah. But when you get to, when you get to the, the temperatures now, it's not about swimming. It's about going in, getting the cold water therapy and getting out. It's not about doing like in the summer, obviously I would, I would swim like a good bit, but now with the temperatures, you're not overdoing it. You have to get in, do what you need to do and get out. Like I've, I've started in the last two months doing cold water stuff. But I mean, now I finish off my shower. <laughs> so I have my shower in the morning. Then I go cold. Then do what Shane says, right? Right. I'm in a, I'm in a, I'm in a, I'm in a. And then that's it. This is so bizarre. You know, I had this lad snap me that are even, they're playing football, right? Mm. And he said, look, we're doing this core therapy. The coach has us doing it. You know, we go into the ice baths. Then we have to go into a hot shower. Then he puts us back in the ice bath, blah, blah, blah. You know, like it's great. All this. And uh, I sent him back a snap and I'm like, it's absolutely pointless what you're doing. Like, <laughs> And he said, what? Like, what are you talking about? Like, it's cold water therapy. I said, you're going from cold water therapy straight into a hot shower. The whole point of cold water therapy is that your body drops temperature and it has to raise by itself. Mm. So for you jumping into a hot shower, you're completely losing the whole point of cold water therapy. You're not supposed to go into hot water straight after. Has it not got something with um, getting rid of cortisol levels? Like certain people with certain problems need different chemical reactions oh, in their brain it, or something? There is so many, uh, like, but look, I'm not telling everyone to jump into the ocean. You, you have to know what you're doing and you have to, you know, you have to build it up. It's, it's not a, you know, I always say that in Snap, just don't do it. You know, don't just jump into the water, but the benefits are unbelievable. Like I do the gym, I do walks, I do runs. I have found nothing as good as co therapy. Nothing. You know, there is no actual faster calorie burner any, there is but no you, cardio you love, that matches. You love the water too, though. I love the water, but there is no faster cardio, no gym, no anything that will beat burning calories and fat than cold water therapy. Running from a tiger. Running from a tiger. <laughs> there, there's your fun fact Friday. <laughs> and come here, what made, when you started Snapchat, were you just popping up stuff for your friends and family to see? Yeah, I was popping up stuff and I was talking a bit into it and, um, I just wanted to show a bit of positivity. I wanted, to, if, if anyone saw it, just be like, well, you know, that's someone that's happy and trying to, you know, be the best version of myself and working on it. You always have to work on each other, like on yourself. You, everyone evolves as they grow up. You know, life changes, things change, circumstances change. So 
I always feel people think when things go wrong in their life, they're stuck in a rut forever. You're not, you know, life can change so quick. So I just want to show a bit of positivity and show that you can, you can work on yourself. You know, you can, you can change a bad situation. You can come out of bad situations. You can, you can be better, like, you know, so that's what I wanted. And then other people, other people like yourself would have seen my page and shared it. Tyke Fleming, um, Kerry there, he shared it. And then I remember I woke up one morning and there was like thousands of ads and I was like, oh Lord. And then it kind of went from there. And then I have a love of trucks. I love trucks. Um, so I have some great friends in the haulage company in the, um, and I just it kind of went from there as well. It kind of went to a truck page as well. So it kind of mm. went full circle. So now it's Molly's mix. It's a bit of everything. And when you post now, who are you predominantly posting to? Do you know what? It's not for any, it's not one direct. I kind of, I would like to think I do a bit of everything. You know, I kind of still have the boy racer side or the plantar side, the mammy side, you know, the working side at times. The fitness side. So it's it's a bit of everything, I think. What do you enjoy post the most? Oh, I like a nice truck. I love I love the trucks. And But I, I do like talking about I like helping people. I love to help people. I love to, you know, I'm a person that that finds very hard to say no to anyone, really. Um and we live in a very funny world at the moment. With a lot of harsh, fucking scary on a Saturday night. A lot of harsh, <laughs> a lot of harsh people. So I like to, no, I like to help. You know, if you can help one person, if you can just help one person, it's it's all that matters. Like, you know, and and I get that on my page. I get it a lot. I yeah. get I get a lot of messages, especially the harsh, the harder ones are on the weekends. People drinking, and mm. it could be two in the morning, and you know, you get a message from someone that's Men very depressed. Men mostly. Very depressed, very down, very bad place. What would the demographic of people that follow you would be? Mostly men or mostly women? Mostly men, I think. What percentage, roughly? 70. Percent. 80, yeah. And from the messages you get from them men, like some of them are probably following you because you're a good looking woman. Oh. Am I? <laughs> the rest of them are, what are the others? What are they? What What's their... I think a lot their, of mammies. I get a lot of mammies. Lots of mammies follow me as well. Um, And who are hard, finding hard at home with kids. Like, look, being a mammy is the hardest job ever. You know, women are so amazing at multitasking, like, and it can be hard. It can be hard at home with kids all day, you know, and sometimes I think when the husband's working all day, they come home and the wife is like, well, you've been off all day working, even though he's been working his balls off as well. You know, but... There's there's so many different... What do you think it's like to be a woman nowadays? What's it like to be a woman you in see, 2023? I'm very divided about this thing because I am kind of very old school. You know, I can have the banter and have the crack. Do you know that kind of way? Some women get very offended because they're all about women's rights now, which, yeah, of course, you know, there should be all that and everything. But I am a bit old school as well, you know, so... In what way? I wouldn't take things to heart as much as some people. Some some women take things to heart like very highly. Yeah, but what what is old school? Well, you know, if the men's out working all day, have the old dinner ready when he comes in, like do that kind of way. Whether some women will be like, I know. I do think that that's very strange because people take that up the wrong way. It's like everyone has their job. It's like if you're in a busy house. It's like if I'm at home and Vicky was gone flat out all day, I would I would court. Why would I not have her dinner oh, ready? Oh, well, yeah, it works both ways. But I'm just saying some women, like, it just, you see, everything is getting programmed different now online, like, where it's like, well, I don't have to cook your dinner, you know. I don't have to do that because men think women should be in the kitchen. Like, it's just all gone so weird now. People are afraid to talk. They're afraid to say anything. They're afraid, to, you know, sometimes you give a woman a compliment and it's nearly like, don't give me, you know, you can't say that to me. Like, Would you it, talk to an awful lot of much young women? Yeah, there would be. I would have a lot of following of, of the younger girls. But it's just a different generation. Do you think generation. society lies to women now? I think they tell young women some of I the think, lies. I think young people now just want to grow up so fast. Um, it's scary. I, I believe kids should be kids. You should enjoy your childhood. You've only won. Yeah. Um, social media is a lot of fault to that. They just, they want to you know, you see 14, 15 year olds and they're like 21 year olds that just want to grow up. They have full faces of makeup and they, they're, you know, they're unbelievable at makeup. They're brilliant at mm. it. But they're kids like, they're kids. I see it with me on. Jane's there and she's just. 
But now, come on, Jane is a whole other level. <laughs> a whole other like, level. Like, she's running the show, like. She she is just uh, it, I I can't I like, can't keep up with her. She was around before all of us. Like there's <laughs> I have no I have, like she could sit down here now and do a full a full I podcast. I feel like you were Jane when you were young. Probably yeah. yeah. Probably yeah. She yeah, but Jane's very girly. Oh, she's so girly. But she she can. It's like sometimes she'll turn the eye there, and you're kind of like, oh, I know. Hide the knives, like. Yeah. She was asking me today when I came home. Um, I walked in the door. And she's so happy to see me. It's, like, it's one of those things about having kids. You know, they're, they're so happy to see you. Because kids, like, they want to be your best friend. They, they're all in, you know. Yeah, yeah. That's what's so cool about kids. Like, they're, if you want to have the best relationship in the world, it's there. It's there for you if you want it. Like, yeah. all you have to do is embrace it. Like, that's, mm, yeah, yeah. that's what's brilliant about kids. And you walk in the door and she's delighted to see you. And you're delighted to see her. And you give her a hug. And then she's there. Um. <sighs> Clark has been so annoying today. You really have to have a word with him. She's like an old soul. Like she's three. Yeah, she's an old soul. And I go up to Clark and I go, what What you do to Jane? I did not do her. <laughs> <laughs> he's just so she like... set me up. Yeah, he's... He, they're, they're gas. They're gas. She's what a, What's your favourite thing to do with the kids? Um, I love to have fun with them. Like we have so many different things that we do together. Like Dylan is so sporty. I was very sporty growing up. I love playing football. And so I love going out playing football with him and soccer. Like we we always do that. And like Friday night is pizza making night. And, you know, we have all our little things because I love, I have things I remember when I was young with my mom and I want them to be that way. I want to be like, well, I remember when I was young, every Friday we made pizza or I remember mom coming out playing football with us or mm. just little things like we would dance around every morning before school now. Like I was, we'd be dancing. And like Fridays now, we, you know, different little things we do. But I, I love having fun with them. I just love to have fun and laugh and joke and not take things too serious. I, I would be quite strict with them only because I'm very afraid of the way the world has gone. And I don't believe anywhere is safe anymore. I just, even when you're in the country or no matter where, what corner you are, you just don't know. You don't know. So I would be strict like that with them. But... I just want them to be happy. Are you strict with the boys or the girls? I'm strict with all of them. Equally? The same. Equally, yeah. Like, I just, I'm just, I worry. I always worry about that. It's just the strangest things are happening. And I just, I worry, you know. I always worry. Because you just don't know. Like, the freakest things happen. And when I was young, you always think, it wouldn't happen here if we're in the country. Things, things like that don't happen. But they happen everywhere. You know, so you just, you're, you're trying to keep them safe at all costs. Like, I do often, you know, sometimes I sit back and I see little interactions that we'd have at home. Yeah. You know, with the kids and the way I deal with them or not deal with them <laughs> and the way Vicky deals with them. And it's like, uh, I think as a dad, you kind of want to, you, you want to help them. Yeah. But you want them to fail. You know, would you, you find, would Vicky be stricter than you? Yeah. 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 She, and Vicky wouldn't, as she says, you don't see danger. I do see it. Yeah. I just think they're not going to learn unless they fall and they're not going to learn yeah. Unless they get hurt. Yeah. You know, because you, you don't learn in life unless you, you get damaged or you get hurt and you don't learn from it. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that that's what the difference between say my parent and method and Vicky's. Yeah. I swear, yeah. I, I just, I suppose I had such freedom growing up, like I had massive freedom, but not, I just want them to be kids. I just think it's so important to just be a kid. You, you have your whole life to go out and work hard and do all the things because like, when I look at them now and I'm like, God, at your age, I like I was literally working, like, <laughs> you know mm. what I mean? And I, so I just want them to be kids. Just yeah. be kids and be happy and don't have the stresses and worries. And, you but know. they come. Oh, they'll come, but they'll come when they're ready to come. Not, not yet. That's what I wonder. How do they know? How do we know? Oh, you'll know. No, <laughs> what I mean is, how do we know that by being the best parents we think we are, but by, by mothering our kids, because we're all do. way better to our kids than say our mothers and fathers would have been to us. And are we making them weaker? You know what? I, I, we're shaping them. We're shaping them for the next, like we're, we're shaping them to go into the world. It's like all we can do is the best we think. You know, I always t tell my lads, like, just be kind. Just, you know, even if someone's mean to you, just be kind. Don't be mean back. Just be kind. Walk away from bad situations. Like, because... The world is just so harsh, like, and it's, I know. you're trying to set them up but for the, it. The world was always harsh. Oh, it's harsher and if you, now. If you look at the, oh, the, dear, da the, now. the, the data now says that like 70% of children are growing up with anxiety and mental issues. I know. And for them, 
for a child to even know what anxiety is at the likes of 10, 11, 12 years of age is crazy. But it's the, it's the world that we live in now with two parents working. You know, we farm out our kids. Yeah. We're getting them babysat. They don't have that. But they see the people are under such pressure financially. Mm. They have to be out there busting their balls because they're trying to keep everything going because it's it's so crazy. But then we complain about this country and there's a lot of things we can complain about and we won't even start with the government. But then you see what's happening in other countries and you think, you know what, we're doing all right. We're doing okay. What do you hear about the government? Everything. Everything. You wouldn't go into politics? No. Do you know any politicians? I think there's only... <laughs> Oh, actually, I won't say it. Actually. Go on, <laughs> say it. I think there's only, <laughs> I always have this saying about Leo. I always say, I reckon there's only one thing he's watching like all the time. What's that? Which is pornohub.com, like learning new ways to fuck the people. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, it's a broken system. It is a broken system, but you see, we all complain. Like, sure, you you know, you meet you meet the neighbours. Ah, that's what's going on above there is awful. Jesus, awful. Carry on. Sure, we're doing nothing about it. Like, until this whole country stops, stand still, man, woman, and child, and hits for Dublin. Nothing's going to change. We can all go to the post office and give out about it all we want, but like, nothing will change until everyone pulls together. Then they, they won't be long waking up. Then, but small protests, small things, no good. It's never going to be any good. Like. So many different groups want so many little things. Doing all Collins on it. And Lose the plot. <laughs> until, until everyone agrees with, like, the water charges. For some reason, that hit home with everyone. Everyone agreed not to do that. And they changed. I just, you know, Ireland was always built of really tough, strong breed of people. Tough as nails, like. You couldn't knock them, like, if you tried. They'd fight tooth and nail. And it's losing it now. Ireland is losing the old school ways and fight and hard work and crack. The next generation. That's these, Molly. Our phone and our television, we've all yeah, become. But the toughness is gone. The young lads don't want to work like. I'm going to drop hundreds of followers. Do you to, think. Thousands of followers. No, I, I'm, I'm just wondering. As a woman, do you not think uh, men are got shock and soft? Oh, God, gotcha. yeah. Well, like, it, well, it depends what men. There's still plenty of hard work in old school. Oh, yeah, Hundreds they're the ones keeping the country going. Yeah, the truckers. The truckers are out there working awful hard. Like, nothing comes into this country and it's moved by a truck. Like, And a lot of people don't see the behind the scenes that, like, I was lucky enough to go in a truck, you know, before a couple of them do a few interviews and things. Like, what you see is unbelievable, but people don't see what them lads have to do. Like, uh, it's the sacrifices they make with families, being out on the roads, like, the tough work even going overseas. It's tough, like. You know, the young lads think it's like these fancy trucks flashing lights on the motorway, like. Hmm. that's not what it's about no, like, there, there, there's so many people out there that, that work hard there's so many people up there so many and then, yeah not just that but you know I have high regard for them like because I, I think people don't not know what goes on behind the scenes the truckers like so what's it like to be a social media influencer I, I don't know I find that word very uncomfortable yeah, but, you know, you have to embrace it. I still get very it. uncomfortable when I get recognised in have places. To em- you have to embrace it. The worst is when I'm working and I, I go into the, all the different plazas. You know, you're going for a cup of coffee or something and you're in full PPE, like, you know, you have the, the big jacket on, the work. And are they expecting you to walk around in a bikini? At work? Yeah. Well, obviously not. But when I am in the full PPE, like, and you know, the, the steel hook up boots and I'd have the big green jacket and or the vest or the whole lot, like, and they come up to you in the plaza, oh, Molly, you know, we follow your pigeon. Like, oh, Jesus. Like, <laughs> 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 oh, my God. Please and, go away. Any nasty experiences? Um, do you know, the, I suppose the hardest part of my page would be, I never get nastiness, like, no negative, like, mean comments towards me, but I would get, like, sleaze. And it is scary when you when you are on a platform and realize the amount of sleaze and the amount of disrespect men have. I'm all for the banter, like, you know, the slagging back and forth. No bother with that. But some of it is sick. Like some of it is you know, sick. You know the way you said there's um, a lot of lads would message you at nighttime drunk. Yeah. There's an equal amount of creeps come home with a few drinks and I'm thinking it's a great job to go, do you know what I'm going to do now? I'm going to send a picture of me dick. I get him. You get dick pics? I get Dick pics. No way. I get loads of shit. I get more penises sent you do to me what I do. than anything else. Do you know what I do? What? I screenshot it, right? The mm. dick. I screenshot it. Then I send a video message saying, that's going up on my page. 
the whole of Ireland and England and everyone else is going so to see it. So have you a gallery in your phone take, of all dicks? You, I, I can prove this. And then I take a, another screenshot of their profile, like their name, and then I block them and then then they're sweating then I'd say <laughs> because I will check their snap score and uh, what does that what mean? It, snap score is you know if it's a real page like if there's a zero snap score it's a fake page you know it's a fake page but if the snap score is big enough over thousands, what's a snap score? your snap score is snaps coming and going so it's basically yeah, it goes up by like one yeah. every time so then you know it's a big. real page this is a real person who obviously you know has some sort of life so then you're putting the whole fear of Almighty God inside and I'm like Snap score. Worse than any, worse than any fear after it, drink. It, it must have broke up like every 16 year old in the country at one stage because they were watching each other's snap store scores go up and down. It was like he's snapping somebody else that's not me or it's fucking. Mad. Yeah, it's mad. But so then, then I put the fear. I put the fear worse than any brand you give you, I tell you. And then they don't worry. They, they, they don't, um, <laughs> I very rarely look at my messages on, on Snapchat. Really? Oh, very, it's too much. You see, I, I'm i always told, like, you know, go put the blog on Instagram. Like, TikTok, I just use that for music and stuff. But And I have a big enough page in that, but I get so much on Snapchat. I'm like, how would you handle Like, I don't know how you handle It's the same same story. Oh, so I video everything no, but the on messages, Snapchat. The messages. Like, don't look. When I get so many, like, it could be a couple hundred in a day. How in God's name, if you win on Instagram and you put your blog on that, then you're going to get... A couple, like how would you how would you manage it but you don't do you just ignore them all no it's not that you ignore them just you, you, everyone knows you have a life <laughs> when you have a <laughs> do they because sometimes they don't you know what? sometimes like you'll get a message like they'll say something to me like hello or something you know and I won't reply because I'll be like I haven't time for this and they'll be they'll keep messaging hello can you snap back <laughs> what I do is I give I give 15 minutes a day so 15 minutes a day I go into the, the restrict I go into my my messages were people that I've messaged before yeah. or people that I've had their phone number in my phone book. And then I go and see if Danny then messaged me because they're, you know, my priority. Yeah. And then I go into the restricted file and I just zoom through it. You can only see the first line <laughs> and I can nearly tell by now whether it's going to be a fucking arsehole. And you're scrolling and you know, it's just people. It's just women, mostly just oh, women. Oh, there's Molly. Giving out, giving out, giving out, giving out. And, um, Sometimes then someone I could meet him yeah. and I could say they say oh I've sent you loads of messages and I yeah. say I don't I don't see him <laughs> like the other night I I was out in um in Carlingford I went for some D and a lad came up to me and he goes I I've sent you loads of messages and yeah. I put in his name and I went into it and he'd sent me messages for the last three years that I've never seen so I'm going back on these messages because it's the first time I've went in yeah. And then you feel like a bit of a dick, but you can't see everything. It's you, not possible. You just can't, you know, and I suppose I always worry then I miss one that's you know, important. Some, that's important because there is some, like yeah. I do get the, the important one. So then I'd be like, Shum Egypt be snapping. I'd be like, you know, I just block them. <laughs> like, I can't but you know just what, stop. When, I'm missing things over you. When you have a public Snapchat, because obviously like I'm not an influencer like either of you, so I, I, it's just normal, right? <laughs> Do you, Stop it. Oh, now. Do you, you son of a bitch. Do You're you, making me blush. So all your like normal friends and family that you'd have on Snapchat or whatever, yeah. right? Is it the same feed that it's all getting fed yeah, into? Yeah, it is so, for mine, yeah. So like literally, I could be snapping you and we talk every day like normal or whatever. And then there's a million messages between the yeah. last time I've snapped you. No, so Snapchat, the, the, the first message comes in. So if you snap me now, that'll go to the top of the pile. So the, whoever snaps and first And the more connections in. you have with someone, the more it goes yeah, up to be your fear. I don't have much of my family on my Snapchat because I'd be, I, they'd be laughing like, you know, because you know, in fact, I'd be sometimes I could be with my mum, like if my nephew plays it or something, I'd be like, stop, I don't want you to sound my own voice, stop it. Like, do you know, when someone in your family hmm. is staying beside you, so I, I trying to keep them off it. Have you ever got any nasty messages from or them nasty emails from Snapchat? I, I got only one because I put up a snap of, do you know, that show Naked Attraction? I was absolutely mind blown by that. I couldn't believe that was a show. And I put it up and they, they gave me a bit of a warning. Yeah, but not since. I'm very good. I'm, I'm very well behaved. Like I've got a good few bands off. Oh, yeah, but you're know. bowled like you're very bowled like you're you'll be you'll be in the bowl. Well, corner and, and, like when they, and they keep um, what they do is they just um, they hide you from everyone. <laughs> They hide you. They shadow, actually, it was John Carton explained this to me. I didn't know about this, because I don't, I'm not in the ball club like he, but he explained this, the shadow ban. Like shadow I, ban. They emailed me uh, a few months ago and they gave me my little gold. <laughs> see the, see the oh, little wow. gold. So they gave me a little gold thing, right? 
And that means you've reached a certain amount of fucking followers. Yeah. And I just emailed them back. I know no one's reading these. Right? <laughs> I know no one's reading them. But I messaged back on an email to see if I message something on that real nasty, I get a little alert or something. Yeah. So I said, I wonder if I think of a heap of bad words and email it back, what will happen? <laughs> and I mess- I put the, wo- I actually went into AI and I actually said, what, what's the worst words that you can say without getting banned? And it goes, we're not going to get into that or something. Yeah. So I just messaged back, dick, cock, fanny, piss, <gasps> cunt, on the email nothing she can say what you want to him such, so now I know role model, no. so now I know they're not even looking them emails just go gone not even watching do you find it overwhelming being on social media no I find the business all around the time running <laughs> overwhelming but do you, do you ever get worried about some of the followers that are a bit obsessive a bit too much uh, like how they feel scariest video I got sent was a guy killing a cat Oh, okay. so he was there. Oh, Dave. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> okay. This is no. This is actually real. I this 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 made me think totally different <laughs> on everything. He was there. Oh, look at the little cat. Oh God, look sorry. at the little pussy. And then he ch- chopped in half. Okay. Right there. Oh. Now that's worse than like, any dick trick. Why did you make it sound like he was master? Of I, that's the way. <laughs> like, yes, you it, said I was thinking it, but I didn't say it. Hey, lads have sent me videos of. Uh, writing prostitutes in China and fucking all these weird things. I get videos things. of the masturbating. Yeah, weird shit. Lads videoing like themselves and they pulling themselves off and <laughs> you're mad. <laughs> <laughs> One lad. <laughs> you're on camera. Don't pipe at me and <laughs> no. stop you when want, you fucking... Do you want to call a towel No, 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 no. No, this one video. I'll just, uh, and I hate that it's stuck in my head because it's the worst this video to be stuck in, my head, stuck in my head. But it's, it's the angle he got. It was so good. It was such a good angle. Captain and Morgan says. It's like he, he had the wide angle lens on and he, because I could see from here down and he was there. Oh, he, he was there. Oh yeah, David. <laughs> <laughs> he said my name and everything. What do you think it is? And he blew his own. And he fucking went so far. He was like, and I was like, and I and I was like, oh, there, there. And I thought it was just me getting that kind of stuff. Oh, there, there. I thought it was just me. So that kind of guy is out there. So after that, you just go. But right. you, you know what the scary thing is? How many of them out there there is? Like it's not just a couple of creeps that do that. It, like I mean. I could get, I could block thirty people in a day at that crack like. Well, that's a, that's a law. Oh, it's it's insane. Like, do you think because you're a public profile, they just they just see it as a profile? They don't see it as a person. No, they don't do you know what? A... They that's a good point. That's one of the hardest things I struggle with my page is that, you know, obviously I am putting myself on that platform. I made that mm. decision, and you have to have a tough skin for it, which I'm getting better with. But they do genuinely feel like they know you. Like they do. Like if I took a break a day and was like, you know what, today now I'm not going to go on it. I will get messages like, are you okay? Are you all right? Why haven't you posted? What's going on? Everything all right? Like they do. And like messages like, oh, can I go for a swim with you? I'll travel down. Or can I, you know, weird things, like strange things. Like there's been a couple of times I've been out walking where cars have kind of like, you know, there was one incident a couple of weeks ago where an upcountry car like was literally following me. Like That's scary. You know? So they do get it. That's the scariest thing in social media. They do genuinely feel like they know you, you know, you're their friend. You know, they, it, it's a very bizarre feeling. And I, I do find that a bit scary. Like, but there's a lot of very unintelligent, lonely, stupid men out there. Yeah. So if you have a um, man out there, cause we, we all know lads like that. And cause I worked with lads that literally, if they went into a film station, and a girl smile them. Yeah. They think, oh, he's oh, mad about me. Yeah, so if you're, say you pop content and you're in your bikini and stuff yeah. like that, and then they have a way of contacting you, and then you just even say hello. Yeah. Like they, they, these dickheads would think, ah, oh, I'm in there. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. And you know, they blame you then because it's like, well, it's your own fault. You're wearing a bikini and you're jumping into the water every day. But I'm just like, that's what I wear swimming, you know, like, I don't care. But I still don't think that means you should send me a video of yourself masturbating. Like, no. I don't, it's, it's, a bit, it's a bit fucking much you know like I'm not giving you that permission like to do something like that I'm fair lucky I didn't grow up in that time you know with pictures that was like oh. like because it's a weird one like you know 
Think about it. Dick, you're sending a picture of your dick. So if, is this a thing? Like, is this a thing? Like when you're but like, when, I, that wouldn't turn me on. Like, no, but sure. If someone sends me a picture of your dick, I'm like, oh god. Like, so, that's not a turn on for me. Like, so just say you start dating that. Right? Yeah. Just say you're, you're what three dates in. Well, you're you're a single man. You're three dates in, and like, oh, how many dates before? Oh, send a picture of your dick. <laughs> But like, should you read like, uh, you know, <laughs> do you want an honest answer? Well, like, like, I just find it confusing. What, what way is that? Do you send a hard, like, are you sending, you go, oh, it's a bit hardcore if I send a hard one, I send but a like, soft why is, one. How is that a turn on? Like, yeah, see, I, I did, have to I did know, have a bit of dating, like, you know, a bit of, a bit of swoon in a girl, like, why does it have to be, look, there's a picture of my dick there for you must love me. I don't get it. Like, <laughs> I did have a uh, one girl that repeatedly requested soft dick pics. And soft I, that was, ones. That was the strangest thing I've ever did, did you send them? No. <laughs> you, did, you, you were not you convincing. Did. No, no, that no, was no, not no, convincing. I'm convincing. We're going to erase that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I, I did, but not soft. You, you can't be in that conversation with somebody and be soft like. So. Literally. Yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> I think about that. For a <laughs> it's just I just find it mad. I was no, like, mad. But is it something that like are women and lads asking for that? You know, how long in before? Oh, can we have some naked pictures? Some of them, I don't even get a hello. I would literally get a dick pic. There's no even a hello, Molly. How are you? This is my name. It's just I open the snap. It's a dick, or they're masturbating one. We'd like, like to clarify, even if you do say hi, hello, Molly, whatever, that still doesn't make no. Okay but for I'm, the dick saying, pics. I'm saying there's no conversation first. Like hi, Molly. Do you know I'm enjoying your page? But it's just the first snap. They might just start following me, and the first snap is their dick. Would that be on a Saturday night. That could be every night. Really. <laughs> every night it's Fuck. just and that's what I cannot get over is the amount of creeps like it's not just a small amount this is like there's so many so does that make you think all men are creeps no I don't think all men are creeps no some of my best friends are men because I do tend to get on better with men I have amazing amazing friends who are lads who are not not creeps whatsoever but there is creeps out there huh. there is like a lot of them I does can't, be, I can't you... believe you get dick pics like I'm shocked at that like <laughs> No, that's what not about women now? Will women send you stuff? Not the fuck at all. An odd one. <laughs> An odd one. I fucking wish. I thought when I thought when this start, started, when I started getting loads of followers there, yes. <laughs> I'm gonna get some amount of tits now sent to me. Not that uh, you know in the word. Dick, 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 dick. Jesus, like I'm not, you know, I'm not gay um at all, but I'd nearly rather look at this like the fucking boobs and a fucking dick anyway. Like honestly, like yeah, look, dicks are very intense. <laughs> <laughs> it's the nature of them, you know. <laughs> did you watch the uh, Robbie Williams documentary? I did. I did watch it. And, you know, I would have been a big fan of him back in the day. Um, it's a hard... It, it, I found it a bit of a hard watch. What you, what you find hard about? I found him a bit uncomfortable. Um, I love Robbie, like. I really thought he was a very talented lad, a bit misunderstood. But I find him now a bit uncomfortable. Like the no pants thing. The no pants thing bothered me. <laughs> the no me. pants thing would bother any, well, anyone normal, David, it would bother. But, um, you know, again, fame too young. A lot happened. For anybody who hasn't seen it, what's the no pants thing? He, he so it was a documentary and when Netflix were doing the head talk and what do you call that? You fancy people? Yeah, talking headshot. Talking headshot, that's it. Um, <laughs> yeah, he's just in his underpants. Oh. In his, yeah. At home, just watching the laptop in his underpants. Yeah. I so imagine, you know, Robbie, we're going out to film all that tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. Come on. Walk in, door open, underpants. And they go, do you want to put on your trousers there? Nah, I'm going to watch it on the bed, just in my underpants. Yeah, I don't know. But when you watch all those and things... And it was quite fast. I found the documentary kind of moved from one part to the next part very quick. You know, Beckham, it was kind of everything. It was a brilliant documentary. Beckham was, oh, Beckham was, you know, out, out of the ballpark, like unbelievable but I found Robbie's one very quick kind of rushed from this to this to this to this to this to this do you think that if you're that real famous say oh, real famous I wouldn't like to be that real famous but yeah how scary is that no I wouldn't like it I, I it was something I would never like like I'm not even famous of any scale now and I find what I have even harder times so no what about money do you like money do you know what it's not everything it's nice to have enough to be comfortable What's enough to be comfortable? You know, you have your house and your kids are well fed and clothed and looked after. You have plenty of food. Your bills are paid. Your house is warm. I'm happy, girl, then. I'm happy. Now, put an old raptor outside the door. I wouldn't be saying no. Like. Would you like a raptor? I know. I know, lads. Tell them what if you have want you one. Watched, <laughs> have, you, have 
you watch my snaps? <laughs> well, I usually say hello, Mr. Ranger. That's my little trademark line every time I see him. I get, you know, it's actually funny. I get so many um, Snapchats of people sending me in Rangers and Raptors all over the country. Now it's it's hilarious. It's kind of a thing now, like, but I love it. It's so much fun. Like people send them in because they see them now and they think of me because I have such a little thing for them. Do you want to hear something fierce and I now for me? If it's bad about the Raptors now, don't, don't. Put no, it it's not. Um, I waited so long for that. And I was so looking forward to getting the Petra one. And for some reason, and I don't know what it is, I preferred my old one. I don't know why that is. And it, it does everything better. It has a beautiful engine. It's really Maybe good fun. Maybe the feel of it is just not right. I don't know what it is. I, I just, I, I love the other Raptor. I really regret. And I think it has something got to do with Daddy. I don't know. I think I, I shouldn't have got rid of the other Raptor. Oh. It reminded me of me, me Dad. I said, oh, I bet. well... Yeah, it's I, I think I'm not sure, or maybe I'm just not genuine with it. Maybe, and that can happen. You know, you can think you want something and you get a car, and it's just not. And like the whole maybe experience, you just drove the mark now, and that's just you done with that's it. Right. <laughs> Do you know what? His, his Aula has a four hundred something horsepower mark, no and I drove it. And it drove it. It was gorgeous, gorgeous. But I may, I think maybe I could be going off cars. Yeah. I don't know. But you do. I'm very like that now as well. I, then, I, and I never thought I would be that way. And now then, I really just couldn't give a toss. I could be just getting, I'm just in a busy stage though. You know, you just probably, could be getting older, David. Well, I am older. <laughs> I am older. Why age you? <laughs> <laughs> you know, one of the main, that's another main snap I get. How old are you? Where are you from? Are you single? There are the three things in the day you would have a mind so, from. So, why is you? Are you thinking? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what was that, that thing you fucking... Imagine a stranger went up to Vicky now, right? And said, <laughs> well, are you single? They How often. Old are? Vicky <laughs> would often have our lads coming up to her. What would she when do? When she's shopping in Yorks. What would she do? She'd say, I'm married. Well, I hope she said it. Maybe she's not telling me <laughs> what she's doing. I don't know. She does take a long time like in town. I like, I like Vicky. Yeah. She does be like a Vicky. long time in town. But Vicky's a beautiful woman. Vicky is absolutely so, stunning. I would um, be very disappointed if an odd lad wasn't coming up to her now. I'd be, you know. Oh yeah, but that makes you proud because you're like, she's on my arm. That's my woman. It's the mother of my kids. Vicky, Vicky, so um, if I could take parts of Vicky for myself, because she's so, like, I mean, like, she had the baby and the last baby was, was tough on her because yeah. we, she, she had, a, she was pregnant, lost the baby, then went straight into another pregnancy and it was a tough one on her. Yeah. And, like, the minute she had the baby, she was like back on, on her game. She lost three or four stone. Like she might, she breastfeeds the baby. Like I've never, I've never changed him. I've never fed him. But see, to me now, that is like the old school woman. I know. And the I, woman that can just do it all. And I don't know how she does. And I know she does be stressed out because I was watching her one, one day and she, I, I was eating my dinner. I was only after coming in and like Vicky would be there. Oh, you must be tired because I'd be up, been up before. Yeah. And like I'd be there looking at her and she's, Jane, she's the baby here, <laughs> Jane pulling over here and doing Clark's homework. And I'm like, fuck, you know, the two of us are just as busy as each other. Did you find a big jump going from two kids to four? People said, you know, you might as well have four <coughs> than three. Yeah. Fuck ye. Yeah. Right. That they, is the biggest lied. load of shite. They set you up, David. It is. Very busy. Now you'd never change them, but it is, it, it's a big change. Yeah. But I, I love being a daddy. Yeah. And you love a busy house. I love a busy house. I love a busy house. I, I love, love a lot going on. I love coming home and, um, I just love coming home. Yeah. Cause it's home. Yeah. And you've made it home. And you're, you're like, I lay on the bed the other night when I'm all, and they all come in and they just love you so much. You never get as much. It's so much yeah. love. Like, yeah. And love is the best ever. It is. It is. And, and I love a home like that because it's, that's what you want. But the minute they go to bed and the minute you get up in the morning, I, I really do feel for lads. I think lads get an awful bad rap because you're so responsible for everyone. Yeah, they're, they're under pressure. Do you know, like I, I'm like, you're responsible for your wife. You're responsible for the house. You're responsible for the kids. You're responsible for everything. And like when money's flowing, everything's grand, but you can't stop. You can't get sick. Yeah. You can't, you just no. have to stay But that's going. why men's mental health suffers an awful lot. Mm. You know, it does. The men in their 40s and 50s is like the highest suicide rates. And like, it, they suffer. They suffer in silence as well. They don't want anyone knowing that, yeah. that they're not feeling okay upstairs. It's like a pride thing, you know. They don't want anyone knowing. And I think that all them men are the most forgotten. Yeah, and, they're, and they are under pressure. They're under such pressure. Like, and they say nothing. They just plow on. Plow on is the word. Yeah. So many of these are just plowing on. Yeah. No one gives a fuck. Yeah, and it's hard. It's hard because... um. Like, they have this Movember, November, you know, mental health, all this, but it should be every month. Like, everyone... 
And now, you know, don't get me wrong. You get people who are completely making a mockery out of mental health. Mm. You know, you get the lads on TikTok who are, I actually witnessed something a few months ago. I could not believe it of a lad in Limerick and the same lad begging for money every night, like off people on TikTok has the Revolut thing up, you know, put money in my account, money in my account. How does that work? They just revolute. I don't know. I actually, I don't actually <laughs> revolute, but they, oh. you, it's a really, it's a co- it's a really easy way of transfer money. And they go up and they say, you know, I'm homeless. I've no money. I'm walking the streets in Limerick, blah blah. They're begging where? Oh yeah, and they're getting the money. Like people are going on saying, it's you know, I I, I put fifty, I revolute you fifty. So he had been on earlier on the day, supposedly. Obviously, I hadn't seen it, but I was in bed anyway, and I came across this live. And there he was anyway, and like there was loads of people coming. Guys, don't give him money. Like someone gave him a rake of money this morning. People are giving him money every day. He's wasting it on drugs. He's not buying food. He's not paying for a hotel for the night. There, he has been offered plenty help yeah. to get off the streets and blah blah blah. So when the majority of the people live went against him, right, saying we're not giving you money, don't be fooled by this. This guy is a pure codger, right? He totally flipped. So he had gone he had gone from like sitting under this tree somewhere in Limerick, literally nearly crying. I've nowhere to sleep tonight. You know, you're you know, I just need this. Can you just give me this? Like, give me this money. Big. And I couldn't believe what I was watching. Like, and then next thing, when he knew he was getting no money, nothing, when people started copping on, they were all saying, Oh, we saw this guy earlier on. He said, Right, F the lolly, I'm going to the bridge, I'm going doing away with myself. And he went on live TikTok down to the bridge in Limerick with no notion in the world of jumping off, right? And was there. And then people on the live rang the guards. The guards came down. No, he, had, he was nowhere near doing anything like that. He wasn't, you know. But he threatened the people. If you don't give me money, I'm going to throw myself in there. Like for me, someone who advocates for mental health, that was hard because there is people that go down there and they tell no one. And they go and they do that, the creators. Do you know what I mean? They suffer in silence. The and people that make, the, make then, the most noise never... Yeah. And you have these codgers <laughs> then who pick on vulnerable people who use TikTok as a kind of a bit of a base. You know, because some people are very lonely and they go on TikTok at night and they watch lies and they, they, you know, feel sorry for people. You know, to get money off them. like. And I just thought it was so wrong. I was like, you are the reason things are so wrong. Like, like you're putting pressure on people. Like, I found that very hard to watch. Very hard. I find I find uh, influencers that use mental health as their shtick, yeah, to get views and get followers. When you know, when you know, they don't give a fuck. No, they don't. They don't give a lot. Of, and you see, a lot of them don't. They don't give a fuck because they just think mental health is such a big thing now. It's easy. It's easy to talk about mental health, but it's like even what I do. I go out and I work on it every day. I work on my mental health every day. It's not easy to do the things I do every day, but I do it because it keeps me good, keeps my head above the water. Like, but you have these people that'll just come on, they'll say whatever they want, and they'll, you know. Do you know how I work on my mental health? I'd bury it down low, <laughs> <laughs> real low, real deep. <laughs> do my crying in the rain. <laughs> <laughs> They're oh, bills the to be the Do you ever get a little bit worried in the middle? Like, do you know you have such a big platform and like? so many followers do you ever get worried in the woods like at night time in the dark they'd be doing well to follow and find me so they would you'd be surprised any man that finds me in the wood you deserve to find me <laughs> be you, nice out to go up one demon <laughs> uh, uh, it'd, it'd be a tough Seven. one uh, I had a few scary moments in the machine and uh, yeah yeah I had a, a scary moment in the machine I was working nights and I backed out I started cutting down a lane I think I talked about this before and when you're cutting tenons, you're just taking a line, yeah. you know, so I'm cutting, cutting, and then I'm backing out. And then there was a empty can of bulmers just hung on a branch. So two o'clock in the morning. And I was there. That wasn't there on the way down. Probably a marker for drugs. <laughs> and then I backed out on the road and there was like four cars <gasps> and all these young lads drinking. And Go ahead. Yeah, it was pretty scary now. Pretty scary. Yeah, I wouldn't like that. No, I'd be very. I don't think I'd be very uneasy now in the woods cut timber. So if they had came over to me right now, the the crane would have been stamping their cars down. <laughs> for they definitely come in hot me anyway for sure and certain. Well, I was quite afraid now. I was quite afraid. Yeah, definitely. I, I wouldn't like that now. Yeah, that but, would make me feel very uneasy. And there's some woods you work in that are pretty scary. Yeah, but you've got big Greg. But Greg gets me there all the time. If I'm working nights, Greg's at home. Greg for <laughs> Greg's at home with the wife, dog cuddling Greg, up in the bed. Greg is cozy. Yeah, I'm sitting there on my own. Although, how do they find your social? How do they do they get aggravated with the cameras? Or? At the start. Yeah. 
at the start they used to. Now they don't mind. It's actually worse for Gara. It's worse for Gara. Because Gara actually has a, a social life. <laughs> so uh, Greg wouldn't go out. Me and Greg wouldn't go out much. I, I don't like going out. I'm yeah. not a going out kind of guy. You yeah. will never see me in a nightclub. It's just, I don't go to pubs. Yeah. I'm not yeah. into that. You timed you time to go over. <laughs> but, but Garrett would like going out, him him and his wife like going out. Okay. And he finds it hard because he'd just be, a lot of people come over to him and he gets mobbed a bit. And I, I've went to a few, and most people are so nice. It's just when it gets to a certain time at night. Yeah. So we went to a few stags. Yeah. And around that 11, 12 o'clock, you have to go back to the hotel. People get too drunk, they get excited. And they're really nice. You know, yeah. it's just if you have a volume of drunk lads and they're spilling drinks, like, yeah. just gets a bit old. And yeah. I, I don't have the, I get tick. Yeah. And then just, you have ah. the patience for it. Like. Yeah. So I just go, ah, fuck this and go back to the hotel. So we yeah. go back to the hotel. Yeah. It's easier. Mm. How did you find the live podcast? Down in Cork, wasn't it? Cork? Yeah, loved it. Did you enjoy it? Yeah, really enjoyed it. Enjoy being in front of the crowd. I, I, no, I just, I loved the connection. Yeah. So I'm in the middle of planning my own live podcast. Yeah. Oh, lovely. But we're doing it different. We're doing it because I, I want to, I want to talk to the audience. Yeah. So I want to talk to people. Yeah. I want to connect with people to follow me. So the people that want to, it's like when I'm looking at my messages and you miss stuff. Yeah. But you're missing it from the people you want to talk to. Yeah. So if we want to have a podcast where it's small numbers, 60 to 80 people, really small. Yeah. We want to be able to tickets to be bought on my shop so is that I want them all to write something oh. I want them and if they want I can talk to them I like that thinking outside the box yeah. so on the night then we can talk to people or bring them up I yeah. can actually connect with my audience that's a really good idea yeah so we're in the middle of planning that so if there's any pubs or <laughs> with 60 to 80 people get the people, local hall going lads yeah uh, that's, what we, really. that's what we want to do so we're in the middle of planning that I was hoping there was going to be a good old boxing match actually that live podcast in Cork there was great um, build up on TikTok for a bit of a boxing match oh, against oh. Well, it's a bit of a list I don't know ah that was only a joke the boys were only a joke I'm only anyway Garen a killer <laughs> he's a big man I don't know He's a big man. I tell you one thing, he's some singer. He's a great singer. Very talented lad. Yeah. I, I like them because I find they're old school funny. Like it comes very natural to them to be funny. There's other comedians, who won't any names, I find are trying to be funny and trying to be past comedians. But these lads are very naturally comic. It, it's, it's in them like. But other people, I think it's very put on. It depends on, everyone likes different kind of humour though. I suppose, yeah. But like what's, like the, I'll tell you two jokes, totally different, right? But they're two different types of humour. I love these jokes, right? <laughs> so, uh, what's the difference between a good joke and a brilliant joke? Timing. <laughs> <laughs> I love that joke. Bang, bang. And then this other joke is, uh, I went to a paraplegic strip club last night. It was fucking crawling with pussy. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, they, but they're two totally different jokes from two totally different genres. Oh yeah, no, I 100% agree. But what I mean is that some comedians in Ireland are trying to be like other comedians from back in the day. So they're, they're sound like, let's for instance, like Pat Chart yeah. was a great comedian. Mm. And John Kenny, it just was naturally... They had great chemistry. They were just naturally funny. Yeah. Like Pat Shark would stand up there and you'd be laughing at him. He wouldn't even have to open his mouth. Like mm. he just, he's just funny. Like whether there's other duos that come out and they're trying to talk like Pat Shark and John Kinney and they're kind of trying to take it off and they're not being themselves. They're not being unique. Yeah. You know, the books and Garen and all, they're different. They're different and they're, they're quick as well. Like who's your favorite comedian? I like Tommy Tiernan. Tommy Tiernan's right. I like Tommy Tiernan because he just doesn't give a shit. He'll say whatever he wants. Um, and I do books. I like the books. I like your man. I think he's very witty and he's very quick off the mark. I loved actually when him and Garen were kind of giving it to each other there on TikTok because it was very funny. Like they were, they were both funny in different ways back and forth to each other, but, but very funny. What's your favorite type of music? I like everything. You like raw music? I like a bit of everything. You like raw? You like raw music? Yeah. I love Kings Leon. I'm a band. I love bands. I like bands. You too? I, yeah, I like you too, but I would love the likes of Kings and Leon that would, would be a big hit for me. Backstreet Boys? I love Coldplay. Do you like Backstreet Boys? I wouldn't be much of a Backstreet Boys. So you aren't in? But I'd listen to them. Like, I wouldn't be like, I hate that song. No, that's crap. I kind of listen to a bit of everything, but I, I do love bands. I don't get 
out much very rarely I get out but I, I love to go and see a bit of a band you like to go to cinema? no oh, I do like but I don't go I just don't have the time you see the cinema is like an hour away and it's just you know too much work too much work but I do like band like you know I was in Danny Burns video music video and that was a, like that was a great experience to go and do that that was lovely to be in the video like are yeah. they from around where you are? they're from no they're from Nori I travelled up to Nori to be in that video yeah, so it was it was a lovely experience. It was great to be in it. Like, did they ask you to be in it? They did. Yeah, they got on to me and asked me to be in it. Do you like doing stuff like that? I love videos. Do I you do like the, to do more of them. Yeah, I loved them, and I I love doing the bandit. Do I know if you? I don't know if you saw them. I seen two. Bit. Where are you yeah. missing bits? There's one, two, and three now. But I love. I loved it yeah I love a bit of acting and I love the bandit and the, that kind of character why don't you release it in one instead of you three see it's bits. very hard because I'm from West Clare and there isn't that many people that do stuff like that so I'm kind of reliant on video on my, like doing it myself do you know because it's just hard to get anyone to kind of come out and video you and do it so a Next lot of my I'm in doing bike we'll set something up yeah sound he's I'll a man ho- I'll hold you to that but I love the bandit character because I wanted to create this like gone in 60 seconds but Irish style you know and this kind of a badass girl who can drive and who can drift and who can do all these things and, you know, hold it with the boys kind of thing. Like start a, a character. Kind yeah. Of. Yeah. So I, I really loved it. I thought it was great. So I'm, I'm, I think there's another one that, coming out with Centerpoint Cars, a, a good mate of yours. Brian. Can you put it, bring it up? What's it called? Brian. No, so what's I think the I'm band of video? Is that, can that be brought up here? Um, oh God, don't put it on this. Don't put on this. <laughs> talk about it do you want people to see it or not? They do see it. <laughs> Too many have seen it. Um, did you video that yourself? Yeah, I did it all myself. Yeah, I did it all myself. But the main one will be done with Brian, with with potential point cars. With the Audi? No, no, I'll be robbing a couple of his cars. That's the plan. It, the whole build up was to get to that point where. I don't know if you saw the part where John is in one of them. I've seen that. Um, yeah. So the next point will be will will come up and we have a proper person to video it up there and and would you have people rotting your hole they're taking too long to come out they're getting, taking too long yeah to come do you know out. what I did the first band there's a bit of crack something I just wanted to do for the crack and like people really got into it and like it's not videoed that well it's just me doing it it's not a whole big deal I loved it but obviously it could have been a million times better but they loved it they got really into it like when's the next one when's the next one what's, ne- what's going to happen I went down to the bog like pretended I buried someone and all and one of them like <laughs> And I had blood all over me. I had blood all over me. And, yeah, Where is that? No, I didn't yeah. see that. I want yeah. to see that. I had the shovel, blood all over And then me. I had like the shovel bang down on top of the camera like I hit your man across the head and all. Yeah. Are they, are they on your TikTok, is it? They are on my TikTok. Yeah, they're on my... They're, yeah, they're on TikTok, yeah. And Joe, um, I don't know if you know Irish Denny. Joe, you know Irish Denny. The Dublin yeah, guy, yeah, he's in one With of the them. Beard, yeah, yeah. yeah. He, I actually, he was going sharing it, but he loved it so much, he actually edited himself into it. That is it literally. I think I have it there. <laughs> Look at him. He ed- and he couldn't put the sound because I had music, and he he loved it so much, he edited it into it. Yeah, I got the text. Oh guys, I don't want anyone getting hurt in this. We go in, we get the job done, and we go. <laughs> Look at his head, like <laughs> he was only supposed to share it. <laughs> He's like, Molly, I had to be in it. I'm sorry. <laughs> He's so funny. <laughs> Do you know what? He's a great actor, though. Oh, you pawned wigs and everything. Yeah. What's he like? He is absolute sound is most genuine person. We're friends out of TikTok and he is um a really good guy. A really, really good guy. I've seen some messages that he'd have underneath his stuff and they'd be fair aggressive. Yeah, he know he uh, as a person he's a really nice lad. Really nice lad. And has been through a lot but a good guy. I think two is next. I think two is a bit better. I want three to see along with the blood. Three is the bog. Two is when I just get the the, the package. Can you uh, can you point out which ones they are for the bed? I'm up since four o'clock tomorrow. So yeah. The one with tomorrow. the windmill is is the third. Oh no, two is beside it. With the you see the one. Which one? The, no, no, over, oh, over. Yeah, band of party. Yeah. <laughs> I actually smoking. Bad for you. I only did it for the video. I actually strapped my phone with a with a cable tie for the wheel. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I actually pretty. got a cable tie and strapped the phone to do that part. 
Well, look, at least you didn't crash the car going in there. <laughs> I'm too good of a pilot now for crashing, Jim. Who's that? My, my neighbour. <laughs> so, did you walk up to your neighbour and go, hey, will you do us a favour? Will you just stare See, into the middle distance? See, you know when he breaks it down, it's just not good, like... <laughs> did, you, did you stare into the middle distance there? Yeah, like I, I don't, I don't, really, I don't want to. When I think back now, <laughs> we might, we might go to the third one there. <laughs> yeah, go to the third one. Go to the third one. You know, actually, do you want? No, no, I no, don't. No, I want, want to see the bug one. I it. want to see the bug one. Uh, which, want, which one's the third one? Sorry. That's, um, the windmill. Yeah, that one. The windmill. Sorry. But do you not, do you not think the acting skills are good? Like Fair City Wardy, like. Is that me? No, oh, it's me. My phone's ringing. What about you? What? Great this song. is the one with Carton. Great song. Yeah. What do you mean he's dead? <laughs> <laughs> no one was supposed to get hurt in this. You go in, you get the job done, you get out. I think I could. That's yeah, definitely fair city worthy anyway. Oh. <laughs> I want to be in Kin. Any, if anyone here has anything to do with Kin, can you give me a call? <laughs> this is actually my audition tonight. <laughs> no, I'm cleaning up. You just get the fuck out of there. This time, I bring my own people in. Which is Curtin. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, take it handy on the phone. Hey, look, you got to make it real, like, so you don't want to do it. That's, that's my brother's bog. fucking valley in the shoulder. That's actually a pair of tights that got you all. <laughs> do you know what? Like, I was working with what I had. Do you know what I mean? Watch, watch the legend now it's about to come in. Here's the big man now. This is the star of the show. Oh! <laughs> Hello. Hey, it's me. Things have taken a turn here. I need someone I can trust. I need a Range Rover move tonight. Are you in? You've been busy. He's good though, isn't he? Uh, Don's the man. Yeah. You want to collect dental every night? No, I'm not going We'll do that. I'm not going I'll be in contact. I feel like that's a phone call Don's <laughs> had before. <laughs> Yeah, this is this. We got to serve the money, Mr. <laughs> <laughs> but, but you know what? I said to him once, I was like, listen, will you, will you, go, will you be in the video with me? Like, mm. not about a girl. <laughs> Tell me what you want to but do. Where you, you, you enjoy doing that, though. That's I love your... it. Yeah, I love playing the part. I think it's fun. I would love to do more of that. But like, it's hard to get into that. But I, I do love it. I do. I enjoy being in front of the camera, funnily enough. You should hey, look. I think anyone when you find something that you enjoy, yeah, I do. That's I what do. you have to get better at. If you have to try and learn, like I'm constantly, I often message man and I go, "Hey, I just sent you something. How the fuck did they do that?" <laughs> <laughs> Trying to get transitions and stuff because I, I'd be watching um, my reels when I'm looking at my reels. I, I just it's all cars, <laughs> it's all cars and stuff. And I see these things they do, and I'm there. How, how do they do that? And then Matt go, oh, yeah, it's very easy. You just <laughs> yeah, yeah. blah, blah, blah. And, I, and until he tells you, then it is. Yeah, because you sent me one one day and we're like, man, how do I do this or whatever? And then I literally went outside, took a few photos, videos of my Straight car. Straight away, sent me back one. In, sent it back into him. And he was like, five minutes. Fuck shit. <laughs> <laughs> but TikTok is great now for editing. Yeah. Like I would do all my edits on TikTok because there's so many things you can do in it once you get the swing of it. But like, look, that's just me doing that messing, you know, having to laugh. Obviously, I would love to do proper better ones, but... There's a thing on the other getting side Getting into that, this though, hard, well. like... Like, I would sit down and actually use video editing softwares and stuff, and when you get too much into knowing how to do it, you start over-editing everything, and it takes that yeah, crack takes that it. you originally brought to yeah. it. I would. But that's just, you know, it's a bit of fun, but it's amazing the amount who got into that, the bandit. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. they really got into it. They're like, when's next one? When's next one? Like, it starts off as a bit of crack, but it's fun. I do enjoy it. it is sure, I started off doing little skits. Really? Yeah. No way. Yeah. And I had to stop. All oh, getting banned. <laughs> really? Oh, Jesus, I have videos. <laughs> Definitely, if I was to pull them up now, I'd be, I'd be gone. 
I was afraid now down the bog that day with the shovel and the bag clever. I was thinking like someone's going to drive past and think, anyone down there. Think, no, but there was a couple of times I ducked because I was like, <laughs> yeah, because the cars were going on. There's a road going through the bog like, and it's like a shortcut between the villages. And I was like, someone's going to think I'm actually here burying someone like. <laughs> and then I had I brought fake blood, so it's like, so, like I'm literally covered in blood, a bag clever and a shovel, and I'm down with the boot open. Like, <laughs> you know, you can get away with anything this, these days. Just like, like, ah. like if someone comes down, like what do you even say? Oh, well, I'm shooting the video. There's no one here. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm sure so it, it was, it was, it was kind of dodgy doing it as well. I was kind of, but they're great fun. I used to. Oh look, the oxen fall now. I used to do this thing like Irish Bob, Sheen. and I used to really enjoy doing Irish Bob. I used to love doing him. Go ahead. He was so funny. I thought, and then they just all started getting blocked and banned. Fucking Americans. I love you, but God, you fucked up my page. Yeah, they shouldn't be blocking you. Like, like the minute, like certain areas in America, like they lost the plot. Lost the plot. I think America's lost the plot full stop in no, loads I, certain areas. I, I was talking a lot about raiding and fucking <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. shite stuff like that. Stop, sure. He had this video up last morning um, on your Snapchat and you were looking down over, I think, was there like a town or something there and loads yeah. of lights flashing and I was like, oh my God, something's awful. It's happened like, oh, oh there was um, blue lights and yeah. stuff. Yeah. And I knew you, you looked really serious and you were like, oh, this and I was like, oh, Jesus, what's after happening? Next thing he starts talking about what was it? Oh, I remember now. <laughs> they should talk about scissor and anyway. I, I just thought, oh Jesus, Cody. Cody. And I, I really like, thought, I was thinking, oh God, something awful has happened because you let on. But do you know the way my brain worked that night, right? So I spent a lot well, of time on my own. I know the way it was working after watching I, that. I spent a lot of time on my own and I'm filling with these and I'm looking at these blue lights and I just, and I just got, <laughs> imagine. <laughs> imagine if there was like gangs of lesbians going around no, kicking, that's each, kicking, kicking each other in the pussy. <laughs> But like he could have been scissoring and, like, <laughs> and he says Don't be kicking each other in the pussy Scissor each other <laughs> <laughs> But you know He inspires me Because I do be sometimes You don't want to offend people But I'm just like Do you know what Take a leaf out of his book Because he don't give yeah, a fuck People well, are going to get offended If they they're want to get, get offended You'll always Yeah you'll always upset So you'll step on someone's toes Even I whether it's right or wrong You cannot win No but you'll never win The you'll more people win. that you talk to Like will I tell you what So one of the offensive messages That I got Right That people got offended I maybe got 20 or 30. These are from people that I would know. Yeah. Um, Jane was wearing the necklaces and stuff because she gets dressed up before she yeah, goes to bed. of course. Yeah. And they were there. Oh, no. No, oh, no. They can choke at night. That's awful bad parent and stuff. And I'd be there. Yeah, like we're four in. I think we take stuff off before they go to bed. Like, you know. No, she, go, she goes to bed in full attire. Yeah, yeah. So, Princess attire. You know, they... Two days before that, I'm women are kicking each other in the pussy and sizzling at each other. <laughs> this night, it's like because my what daughter's wearing a necklace. You can't win. <laughs> no, but they probably enjoy that talk, you see, like because they're just weird. No, they're just strange you can't win. So, Molly, win. what what is your dream? If I was to give you your perfect life in a year or two's time, what would it be? Perfect life. <laughs> <laughs> You're perfectly. Like. To have a nice set of LEDs that don't fall down behind me. The lights are falling down. <laughs> this is because we went up to that room. Yeah, it could be. It could be. That's why. They're we new lights. It's, the a, it's, room. A, it's a work in progress. <laughs> we went up to the haunted room first, people, and now they're coming down with us. <laughs> Join in soon for our haunted special. <laughs> so your perfect life, what would you like to be? Perfect life. Well, I'm a very simple person. So yeah, I would, would you just like love... to be making them videos? I would love to be doing videos. I would love to be helping people. If I could, making people laugh, you know, a bit of everything. Tell us a joke. Knock, knock. Who's there? I don't know because I don't know any jokes. Knock, knock. Who's there? That's what happens when he makes monster cup. <laughs> my, 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 son, my son has this brilliant way. He hates knock, knock jokes. And you go, uh, knock, knock. He goes, come in. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually good. That's so good would you be making videos for a living? I don't know, is there a living out of them? But I would, I enjoy doing them. I do enjoy doing them. And like, it's not to be known or anything like that. Do you know, like when I, when I started this, this was only just to help people. And like I said, show some positivity in me. But I do love doing them. So I would love to get into that side of things. I would love to go out, maybe do some more interviews. To be honest, the real dream, if I'm to be honest, would be a show where you go out and drive gear. I would love to go to farms. I would fucking Drive love that gear. Show, but... I would love to showcase trucks. Go out with the truckers, you know, like just showcase a little bit of everything. You know, like the women driving planter, you know, fans, planter, trucks, diggers, the men Don't driving. Don't show would ever get insurance. No, probably not. <laughs> I probably wouldn't get insurance. I'd be a liability. But I, I would love to be out on the road 
meeting people and showcasing all the different things that people do. And obviously getting to drive some nice stuff like, you know, that would that'd definitely be the bonus. What's the nicest thing you ever drove? Hmm. That's a good question. That's why I asked it. <laughs> I don't, I don't know. You have to have drove something that just fucking probably my brother blew your mind. I like the br- oh the brother, the brother had the, a brand new BMW five twenty. She's or no five no sorry where am I going my five twenty a new X five and she's just beautiful diesel diesel beautiful she's commercial for work but she's beautiful. Um, what's your favorite car? If you could have any car in the morning. You've no budget. Molly, look at me. No oh, budget. Oh, I want the Raptor. Sure. Look, that's coming. Ah, Molly, you don't, I know, don't I just, just tell them. you you've no budget and ask for a Raptor. I want, I'm a simple girl. I put a house near the sea and the Raptor outside the door and I'm happy. At least let it be an American Raptor. To be honest, the favourite car would be the Mustang. Like, I love a Mustang. You cannot beat the old American full power fucking beast. Absolute beast, like. I love a Porsche 911 no, you know GT3 what? RS no. if anyone Do you know there, what I just I'm not into this I will suck a dick <laughs> for it You heard it here first guys Yep but no heard problem it. I'll tell you right here um, now, I was swallowed load <laughs> <laughs> All the creeps He's going to get yeah, so much this tomorrow <laughs> <laughs> Yeah I, I'm not into them big superpower cars I'm just not into the supercars they, I know they look nice and everything but they're just I really don't know they're pieces of art. You get fucking sick of them. You wouldn't. You want something with a bit of balls. Oh, they're so something cool. Something to grab. I want, no, some, so I want cool. something to grab. Are you ready? What's the, why, what's the book? You know <laughs> what the book is about. I don't like the books. You know. I'm not a big book person. Let Once see. upon a time. I do write little notes. There was a Scissor Sisters. <laughs> Tips for all men living in a woman's world. That's a different thing. <laughs> uh, do, you, do you want to write? Well, I tell you some things that I wrote here for a podcast. Right. <laughs> in 1918, women gained the right to vote. Pros and cons, discuss. <laughs> this is just offend. I want to see, can I get, can you be offended? I've never voted, so I couldn't give a fuck. Have you never voted? Couldn't give a flying fuck, to be honest. You, have, you should vote. That's your democratic me. right. No, I, what's the point? One fool is worse than the other. Why, who would you oh. vote for? If you go up now, I'll vote for you. you. You go into politics, I'll vote for you. But I ain't voting for the rest of them. Should all books about feminism be in the fiction section in the library? Yeah. I'm Was an unlocked kitchen door the cause of feminism. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're going down. No, I'm only joking. Um, so what I'm doing is I'm going to, you, you've, you've heard my podcast before, haven't you? Yeah. Yeah. I'm an advocate. I'm I actually have a good friend that listens to you a good bit. Um, and he, he, he loves your podcast, but he was, he was telling me a few bits about it today to be prepared for. I was like, oh wasn't well, as bad as you thought? Were you nervous? No. Wasn't it grand? Which I know you like. Yeah, exactly. Joe. You, know? you ready? Cool. What's your first vivid childhood memory? My first vivid. Just been on the farm. Farm. Been out. The farm. Running around the place. Can you remember your dad dying? Yeah. Vividly. Still? Haunts me at times. Still? Mm, still. He has played a... It's, um, I was young when he died. Never thought he'd die. Like I said, I was told on a... Every couple of weeks... Not every, every couple of months, you know, he could have a turn. So it was nothing new for me to be called out of school or from home, dad sick. The so brother. you always thought he'd get better? He always got better. He always got better and he always came home. He was such a strong-minded man and... You know, uh, the mind was always perfect. Like that wasn't, you know, it was the body feeling, but it was, that was my life. Like he, my life was him sick. The lads knew him better, the hard working, but he was sick. Like for me growing up, because there's a big age gap. So with me and the lads. So, um, yeah, I remember it vividly and I didn't take it well. Like 
it definitely affected me. I think it's always it's always going to affect me. Always. For the rest of my life. Like I miss him terribly. Like, Even still now. Miss him terrible. There you know, you learn to live with a with a loss of a parent. In some ways, people always say, Do you ever hear this saying like when someone dies but they're a good age? Oh, they're a good age. They got you a good age. For me, I think personally that's harder to lose someone because you've known your whole life with that parent. So you've had them till they were 70, 80, 90 years of age. That's all you know. So I actually think when people say someone has got to a good age, you know, they had a good life. I think it's harder on someone because sometimes they make you feel like you shouldn't mourn as much because they got to a good age. But you've, that's all you've known. They're in your life, your whole life, and you have to now live without them in your life. You know, I lost him very young, so I have to constantly think of it because I don't ever want to forget him because I was so young. And I never thought I'd lose him. So you never think at that time, I have to remember this, I have to remember that, I have to hold on to this. You know what I mean? So it's, it's a weird, yeah, and I do, I struggle, I miss him, I miss him so much sometimes, like, it can be overwhelming, like, because you just think of. It must have been really hard when you were that young though. It was horrible. I, I definitely switched off a lot. I was very numb at the time. And, you know, and, and probably, I don't know, when I think back, I, it was just a hard time. I didn't understand it. I didn't understand sure, it. You're a chap. I was a child, but I didn't understand it. And it was just a tough time. But I miss him terrible. I do. I miss him terrible. I would go up to his grave an awful lot now and sit down and have the chats like. How often? I call him probably a couple times a week. I go up there. I call, you know, I go be up to see the man like, so I pop up to him. So I would, I would, yeah, I'd sit down and talk away to him. I kind of dwell on them things a lot, don't I? I think it's because I'm sort of dwelling on myself a bit. But it, yeah, but it is like, because you're going through it as well and it, it's, it's, oh, if it's hard, but you have, you have to be allowed to grieve and it can hit at different times. You can hit at different times and different things can. Yeah, because I, I found it weird. Like last year, you're really <coughs> sad, you know, and this year it's more lonely. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's oh. more of a lonely thing. And you're there thinking, fuck is wrong with me? I'm a grown man. Like, no, but that's the thing. You see, that's what people think. <clears throat> they think, you know, you had your parents for a long time. They were a good age. You don't have to be that way. Of course, they're your parents like, and the, you love them. And it's very hard when one goes or any of them go. It's so hard. I heard a, I heard a phrase. In a book. It was actually a science fiction book, but it's fucking brilliant, right? It's Brandon Sanderson, by the way. Fucking legend. But loss is uh, love with nowhere to go. You know, grieving is like, uh, you know, all this love with nowhere to go. It's yeah. cool, a cool phrase. Yeah, it is a cool phrase, actually. Would you like yourself if you met yourself? Yeah. 100%? I think so, yeah. If, li so. if life was a movie, which scene would you replay over and over? <laughs> what I won Queen of the Ring. Three years in a row. Did you win it three years in a row? In Limerick City. So you, you actually are a good pilot. Oh, I'm a fucking shit hot pilot and I will be first to say it. That's cool. Yeah. Have you ever crashed? Yes. Badly? Yes. Hurt yourself? Once. Very bad, yeah. What happened? I was going too fast. <laughs> and lost the back of her. I was young. Thought I could. Thought I was Art and Sinna. And I wasn't. Lost the back of her. Tried to hold her. Couldn't hold her. The crash kind of happened. It was a long crash because I tried to hold her and I hit a pole. Ooh. Broke it in half down top for her. Yeah, I was hurt, but it did slow me. It made me realize I'm not invincible and that you can crash. And even when you think you're a good pilot, you can fuck up, you know. So it definitely, it, it quieted my driving a lot. Did you get in trouble? No. Thousand fucking pound for the pole, though. Thousand pound? Thousand fucking pound. Who charged you that? The ASB. That's expensive. Because we're not getting that for him. That was embarrassing. What's something that you're holding on to that you need to let go? Mm, I don't know if I'm holding on to anything. Like, come on now. I've got good with, you know, years ago, yeah, but I think since I've got so better mind-wise and strong-wise, I don't hold on to much anymore. Like years ago, you know, you, you hurt over other people or you dwell on things and you hold on to things. But I think since I've worked so hard on my mental health and I've got strong, I don't really hold on to much shit anymore. I don't like, I, I don't let too much phase me because what's the point? What is, like, you know, you, you can't, worrying about things or holding on to things isn't going to change anything. So you just sometimes have to let shit go. When did you feel at your weakest in the last, say, 10 years? Probably four or five years ago when I started getting anxiety, I felt, I, I, because you can't control it, I couldn't control it. And I didn't know where it was coming from or why, why like, it was happening. 
So that was, for me, that was scary because that was the first time I felt my mind was a little funny. Do you know? Like it was a little off. Like you hear people saying we're struggling mental health, you're struggling. But that was the first time I felt like, okay, like I'm, this isn't normal. Like I don't feel normal. And how was it manifesting itself? Like getting panic attacks? Really I just, it just came or? completely out of the blue. I got this feeling of I'm about to die. It was just this took over my body. Happened completely randomly like. And I haven't, I don't know what brought it on. Maybe just stresses of personal issues that were going on in my life or whatever. But I just started struggling so badly with anxiety. And it took me over so quick because the first time I got one, I let it. Do you know, I, I, I gave into it and be like, okay, I am dying. Like my heart is racing. I'm about to drop you know, something really bad's about to happen to me. And when you let that take you over the first time, then it will continue and it will continue. And even no matter how many times you get them, you still think I'm about to die. Because that's the scary thing with panic attacks. People think, even when they get them loads of times, they still think they're about to croak it. Like. So that frightened me. Like That did scare me. But thankfully, you know, I did go the route I did. And I'm not saying tablets don't work for everyone. They do work for some people and it's whatever works for you. But it just, that wasn't the road I wanted to take. Who brings you the most happiness in your life? My children. Which one's your favourite? <laughs> 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 Tell you My children. I have one little boy and he's just, he, he was very ill when he was born and spent months in hospital. He was very premature. And he, um, you know, he has, it's amazing when you see how far people come. I just, I, they're just amazing kids. I'm very blessed. They're very good kids very good natured kids and I'm I'm so proud of them like they give me awful joy like they really fill my heart so much they really do like they're just they're gifts like I'm very blessed they are cool you believe in God? yes I believe in God I I am not this person that thinks there's a hell and there's a heaven I, I don't know we don't know I believe that's why it's called fate <laughs> <laughs> but we don't know like there's no you know 100% this is where we're going lads when we bow out you know but I do believe in energies and souls and I believe that we do go to somewhere else where our energy lives on a, a, a good place I, I believe that there is somewhere where you do find it's peaceful I do think that personally when do you have your most peace? <sighs> You know, I have, there's sometimes when I'm sitting on the couch in the evenings, which is where I get to sit down, but the kids are all doing something. Do you know, they're happy or they're colouring or they're talking or they're doing something. And I have the moments where I'm just like, I'm really lucky, like, hmm. I'm really lucky. Do I'm healthy? They're always they're in them healthy. little moments that you just, just little take things, stock. Yeah. And, and, and there wouldn't be the moments you think, but there is times I look around and I'm like, I'm really lucky, like, I'm really lucky, like, because there's so much things going on that are bad. And I'm like, I'm really lucky, like. I'm very blessed. I, I do. I always feel blessed. I'm very grateful, like, because you just don't know. We are always a split second from the other side. So I find it is important to be grateful in life, I think. Do you think it's possible to grow up without having kids? I think kids definitely, definitely change you. Well, of course you can grow up. You can, you can always grow as a person. Kids don't have to, to be that. You know, you can, you can grow up without kids, of course, yeah. Anyone can do anything to put their mindset. It's, it's depending on the person. Can't staple water to a tree. <laughs> <laughs> but it can fall off a leaf. It can. Um, do you trust anyone with your life? I have a, a very, you know, I get on with everyone. I have a very small circle of people I, I truly trust. So, is that one person? Do I have to pick one? That's the question. <laughs> One person? Um, my mum. How is your mum? She's okay. Her health hasn't been great now the last year and a half, but I trust her. I trust her. Are you like her? No, I'm like my dad. No, I'm like my dad. I'm my father's, my father's daughter. I am. Do you get on well with your brothers and stuff now? Right. Yeah, I do. Yeah, but like everyone lives their own lives. Joe, you know, we all we all get on. All is good, but we're all busy. Everyone's busy, you know. Everyone's taking care of their own families. But yeah, no, when we meet up. We have a good crack. What do you want to be known for after you die? For being kind and 
a bit of crack and not taking things too serious. Molly, you did well. You answered all the questions. Well done. What's my prize if it's a raptor? Sound. It's not. It's a raptor. If you I try me, one. If you give me eighty four thousand. Do you take both the raptors? Molly, um, how does everyone follow you if they want to follow you? You can follow me on Snapchat at Molly Kelly twenty five, mm-hmm. our TikTok, Facebook, Instagram. But my blog is only on Snapchat for now. We might expand in the future, but at the moment, that's keeping me busy. You know you. you like I do all my stuff on Snapchat and it just it's the same thing but on everything. But it doesn't come up all the time, the Instagram thing on mine. It comes up now and again where you can post it and then it'll go into Instagram and then you've come back out. And I do it like, all individually. Oh, really? I, I make all the videos on my camera and then oh. I just post it to Snapchat and then post to Instagram. Okay. I don't use TikTok. TikTok doesn't, I don't sit, it doesn't sit well with me. TikTok was originally a base for children to, to make songs and now it seems to have turned into a... I love the lives. It's, it depends on lives though. Some of them are amazing, but some of them. Uh, last Wednesday, there was a life on because I searched for the weirdest ones. And there was a lad saying. <laughs> Purposely. I have gentle warts. Ask any question. <laughs> I, do you know what? I think that's, is that the one I saw? It could it be. Was the herpes. Herpes. Yeah, that was yeah, it. I saw it, I saw it, I saw it. And like, I, I, I'm just asking like That's questions. one way of never getting laid for the rest of your life. Like, just put it out there. Just put it out. And the weirdest ones. And I love the <gasps> do religious you, lads. Do you ever see the woman like she's like a robot. Thank you for the oh thank the you for NPCs. The, thank you for the thank you for ice the, cream, ice cream, so ice cream. Like then you're thinking, why are we all busting our balls? Like, like we just, you know, we just go in front of this and act like a tool for a couple of hours, and make a fortune. We're in this weird little zone. But I do think we're going to come out the other side of it. I do think. Do you think so? Yeah, yeah, I do. When if more people <laughs> start just uh, speaking honestly and talking truthfully and just having their little arguments. And yeah, I suppose. Yeah, I, I suppose. Free speech is only any good if you can listen to the person you don't agree with. That's, that's what it's all about. But you see, people don't, like, everyone is entitled to their opinion. It doesn't mean they're always right, but they're yeah. entitled to it. I know. You don't have to agree with everyone, but you don't always have to hate on someone because they have a different opinion to you. And that's the problem. They hate yeah. on someone if someone is saying something different. That is true. They're not being open to it. Well, like, it was lovely talking to you. Too, but it was an absolute pleasure. Lovely talking to you. And um, you'll come on again. Price is right. Price is always right because what we're going to do is we're we're going to do some extra content. Oh, but they're going to be, be. Do we need to turn the cameras off? The, <laughs> the, the cameras will be on. Vicky, but, I'm so sorry. I was joking. <laughs> <laughs> Don't the, send the Protestants after me. The, the camera, the cameras will be on, but we we might need some women's input on stuff. Don't bring the books now because I have started a bit of a turf war there about the rock shore. Ah, he won't fucking care, Stephen. But, you know, we'll tag him in it and say whatever. And I, I, no, I'm not going to lie. I do troll him a small bit about the rock shore. We, a bit, I do, I do get a bit mad. Does he care? I'd say he cares a bit. He fucking runs Castleton, you know. <laughs> he had some TikTok up the last day and he had the hair all slicked back, you know. Really, mm. really like, I don't know what you call it. So I put a comment like, that, <laughs> that hair too looks like a man that's enjoying a creamy pint of rock shore. <laughs> <laughs> Did he message you back? Mm, he did a couple of comments under it. Right? Uh, that's funny. But Molly, before we go, did you not have something you wanted to promote? Yes, I did. I did. Um, I have been very privileged to be asked to do a talk on mental health for an amazing, amazing charity truck tractor van run that's happening December 16th. Um, there is going to be a big do in the Grove Bar afterwards. Grove Bar where? In Ennis and County Clare. And it is raising money for the Irish Sun Foundation and Peter House. So as you know, I'm a big advocate for mental health. So I'm privileged to be talking for it. So please, guys, if you can come out, support. It is so greatly appreciated. Very good. Molly. Yes, darling. Before we all end this, uh, there's a very important question that I have to ask you. Don't say Scania or Volvo. No, I'm not going to be that. Um, no, no, Scania. I wouldn't, wouldn't do that. You know. But what is your favourite lorry? Is there a lorry out there that you like or a group of lorries? This is a very, very interesting question. There is a favourite lorry, um, which on. is owned by a very good friend of mine who's going to kill me for mentioning names. Sorry. Um, Means Haulage they are in nice Newmarket lorries. in Cork. Do you know them? Are, I know them lorries, yeah. Are they not sexy trucks? They are gorgeous trucks. They're trucks you stem back and look at. Aren't they? Do, does, um, how many of them do they have? Um... I'd say seven, eight. 
Will I say seven? They're gorgeous yolks. They're gorgeous. And they're just done so tastefully mm. and so nice. Like there's not too much. They're so sleek, which I think less is more. But the details that are done on them trucks is just stunning. Does, did he ever let you drive them? <clears throat> I, I might have drove one, but I don't know if Kieran knows. <laughs> <laughs> he knows now. <laughs> um, the Scania is just my favourite truck on the road. His Scania is just... Yeah, and they're lovely people. She's a beauty, yeah. You couldn't meet nicer salt of the earth. Um, yeah. Him, Kieran and Murray are just the nice people you can meet and a great friend of mine, but the trucks are just my favourite trucks. Definitely. You may, you may go driving a truck. They'll yeah. give you a job. They'll give you big money. Hard to get drivers big, now. It's only big money if you're out on the road and you're not home. That's the big money in trucks. Why? Sorry now to all the truckers. But if to make the good money in trucks, you have to be away from home. Oh, stay now. And that's tough. They sacrifice an awful lot. They sacrifice a lot, you know, to keep the wolf away from the door. So, well, look, as long as we're not sacrificing children, <laughs> we'll be, we'll be okay. <laughs> if it gets to that, we're just gonna have a call haul to the whole thing. Call haul. <laughs> Molly, thanks a million. You're very welcome. Appreciate it. It was an absolute pleasure. <laughs> good luck. See you next week. <laughs> See you next week.